Amid the emerging colors of autumn, the Notre Dame faithful gather on campus for another football weekend. The fans know today's game is pivotal. A victory could set the Irish on the way to a successful season. A loss would drop them to 500, and the doubts of achieving a winning campaign would appear. The weather perfect. The stadium sold out as Notre Dame coach Ty Willingham faces the school where he formerly coached as Stanford meets Notre Dame. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Notre Dame Stadium. Tom Hammond and Pat Hayden ready for this matchup between uh, the two rivals, Stanford and Notre Dame. The Cardinal come in with a three and one record. Their only loss, a narrow defeat at the hands of top ranked USC. And uh, this is a completely different team from the one that Notre Dame beat by 50 points a year ago. Yeah, really an embarrassing loss for all Cardinal players, coaches and, and alums. But, you know, Buddy Tevis, this is his best edition of, of his three seasons and, and really a nice turnaround offensively. Modest numbers you see there in 2003, scoring almost twice as many points this year a lot of production in the offensive side of the football but it's really led I think by their quarterback Trent Edwards who's had a terrific start to this season 61 percent completion percentage Ty Willingham recruited him said he's the most accurate high school quarterback I had ever seen now Stanford also has some big tall wide receivers and Evan Moore perhaps the best six seven plays on the Stanford basketball team as well. They like him inside that red zone. We saw some tapes of him against USC in Washington. He catches everything you throw. They throw it to him high, and he goes up and gets it. Well, of course, Notre Dame had his three-game winning streak ended at the hands of a top 10 team Purdue a week ago so what do the Irish take away from that well one thing Brady Quinn passed for over 400 yards yeah only only Joe uh, Feisman has passed for more yards ever he had two really good weeks the last two four touchdown passes against Washington you saw the yards against Purdue but they didn't get the ball in the end zone enough Tom and I think when Notre Dame's playing well they do two things particularly well and the first is they run the ball over 150 yards in those three wins but in the two losses what do they do it's less than 50 they got stuffed in the running game in those two losses. And the other thing they do is they force turnovers. 14 forced turnovers in those three wins. Two of those have been returned for scores. And then in the uh, the losses, just two for forced turnovers. So as we have watched Notre Dame this year, Tom, I think it's evident to me is, is when they get the balance, when they get that running game going, get over 150 yards, they force a turnover or two on defense, they can play with anybody on their schedule. Well, roughly halfway through the season, Coach Willingham says this is a direction game. What direction will the Irish head in for the final part of the campaign? It's Notre Dame and Stanford. We're back for the opening kickoff after this from your local NBC station. And three and one, and this could be a huge victory for them. Their first road game of the season. Sanford won the toss and deferred to the second half, so they will kick off to Notre Dame. And the kicker, Michael Scroy, a junior from Plymouth, Michigan. And Anastasio deep, along with Hopkins for Notre Dame. Doesn't matter as Scroy buries it in the end zone. Hoskins and Anastasio didn't have a chance to return that one. So let's take a look at our starting lineups now brought to you by Adidas. There are the numbers on sophomore quarterback Brady Quinn. Nine touchdowns, five interceptions, over 400 yards against Purdue last week in a losing cause. Yeah, he's really coming around. Throwing the 15 different receivers as you look as they're at their offensive line. And in the backs and receivers group, Ryan Grant is back after missing the last two games and Maurice Stovall also. So Stovall and Grant back in the lineup for Notre Dame. The Irish begin from their own 20. Yeah, it's Stovall down here. He's going to help in the, in the run game. It's, it's strange to say that about a wide receiver, but a very good blocker. And here is Ryan Grant. Glad to get back in the lineup and glad to get a carry with that hamstring having healed enough to get him on the field and a nice gain on first down. David Bergeron makes the tackle for Stanford. And here's our Stanford defensive lineup. Our Adidas lineups for the Cardinal with Scharf, Jenkins, and Oshinoa up front. Alston, Newberry, Bergeron. Schimmelman is the leading tackler for the Cardinal. And you see the secondary. Togwe, the free safety, one of the leaders of this Stanford defense. Quinn's first pass to McKnight. Raymond McKnight dancing across the 35 to the 37-yard line for an Irish first down, a gain of 10. John Alston, the tackle for Stanford. Remember we were talking to Bill Dietrich, the offensive coordinator, yesterday, Tom, and they, they call this play rocket. It, it's just a simple little screen. It's been their most productive play. You see the lineman out here on the screenplay. 
They, when they run it to the right, they call it Rocket. When they run it to the left, it's called Luther. RNL, obviously. But the offensive linemen are quick. They get down the field. They've scored two direct touchdowns off that play and have had three other plays of more than 25 yards. No one's really stopped it all season, no. have they? Grant, the tailback, fell down and lost a couple of yards. Schimmelman will get credit for that tackle. You know, this is the offensive numbers, they've absolutely improved in terms of total yards each week from BYU right on through to Purdue. But in their two losses, BYU only one offensive touchdown in Purdue in spite of 536 yards, only two offensive touchdowns, and didn't get, Bill Diedrich, the offensive coordinator, was talking to us yesterday, just didn't get enough balance. They threw way too many passes, over 40 passes. Second down and 12 now. And Quinn changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to three as he hands it off to Grant once again. And Grant twists across the 40-yard line, brought down by Bergeron. It'll be third down and long for the Irish. You know, I think one of the most difficult things in college football to do, Tom, we've talked about it before, is be patient with the running game. Just stick with it. Because you're going to have a lot of ugly plays. You know, you're going to have a losses, and you're going to have a couple of you know, two-yard gains. But you've got to be patient with it. It keeps the game close. They don't want to be in a shootout. And allows you to get down to a fourth quarter with a chance to win. Saw Ryan Grant going to the sideline. Carlisle Holiday is in with... Samarja and Stovall at the wide receivers and there's a flag. He may have had 12 men in the huddle. I'm not sure the flag uh, before they even got to the line of scrimmage. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 players in the huddle. Five yard penalty. Third down. Larry Farina from the Pac-10 heads the crew today. Pac-10 officiating crew. So now third down and 11. You know, one of the matchups they, they really like was with their tight ends. They felt with Marcus Freeman and Jerome Collins. By the way, Anthony Fasano, who had such a big game last week, unavailable to play today. But Freeman, number 87, against number 17, Jared Newberry. A lot of man-for-man -man coverage with a tight end and the linebacker. Four wide receivers in this formation. Grant in the backfield. Quinn. Sacked. Quinn is sacked by Julian Jenkins and Michael Craven for a big loss on the play back inside the 30-yard line. H had absolutely no opportunity there, Tom. Sacked seven times last week. And this really is not Brady Quinn's fault. Absolutely no chance. Off the corner here. Didn't pick up the blitz. The, the, uh, the linebacker Craven over the middle. Marrero is deep. Marrero deep. And Marrero with a return of the... Fitzpatrick punt, Mike Richardson the tackle, 42-yard punt, but 17 on the return by Marrero. So great field position for the Cardinal on their first possession. Stanford will have the football in a scoreless first quarter. Hall's Fruit Breezers. When screaming fans need cool, soothing relief from a dry, scratchy throat, they reach for a Hall's Fruit Breezers. Hall's Fruit Breezers, treat your throat. By the document company, Xerox, helping your business grow in unexpected ways by coca-cola let's make it real and by michelin because so much is riding on your tires tom hammond pat hayden lewis johnson notre dame stadium the irish after the sack of brady quinn on their first possession punted away and stanford takes its first possession in great field position at the 47 yard line one of the things to watch about trent edwards their outstanding sophomore quarterback is how quickly he gets rid of the ball Almost every time under two and a half seconds. Edwards, 6'4, 210 pounds. They hand it to J.R. Lemon, the running back, and he's stopped at the line of scrimmage by Derek Curry. And let's take a look at our Adidas starting lineups. Trent Edwards ranks highly in the Pac 10 in almost every category. And there's some good throwers out there. Four throwers throwing, completing over 60% of their passes, and he being one of them. Very young offensive line for the Cardinal. Lemon, the leading rusher. And Moore is the leading receiver. First pass, Edwards. Bradford, the intended receiver, being defended by Preston Jackson. He broke inside, and Edwards threw it outside. Miscommunication there. And the Notre
Notre Dame starting defensive alignment. Tuck, Paulie Landry, Buttonzak. And, and Tom, I think Justin Tuck is going to have to have a big day today. He's their emotional leader. He needs to get three sacks. Goolsby, the leading tackler. And the secondary gave up some big plays against Purdue. And they will be challenged again today by some big, tall receivers of Stanford. Third down and nine. Edwards pass on target caught by Alex Smith the tight end rambling all the way down to the 25 yard line you know you in the old West Coast offense Bill Walsh's West Coast offense they didn't run the shotguns he liked to get rid of the ball so quickly but look how quickly Trent Edwards even out of a shotgun formation can get the ball back and gets rid of it it, it you know, frustrates pass rushers and perfect ball placement out in front of the his tight end Alex Smith didn't have to slow down, adjust for it, allowed it to catch it fully on the run, turn up field, and pick up a first down. Good his, call, please. His 20th catch of the season. He's the top receiver for the Cardinal, and it covered 27 yards. First down for Stanford, driving on their first possession of the game. Edwards, plenty of protection from that young line, but nobody open, so he runs inside the 20-yard line. Derek Curry in hot pursuit. Out of bounds, made a gain on the play when all his receivers were covered. You know, we talked to Buddy Tevens this week up in Palo Alto and said, hey, what about the turnaround today? First thing, this position, our quarterback position is settled. We have a starter that's emerging as a really, really good player. He said we have some more depth than we've ever had, and our offensive line is beginning to play well. They took their lumps last year, a lot of freshmen the offensive line last year but playing much better this season second down and four two tight ends Smith and Traverso Edwards on the draw play handoff to Lemon and Lemon pounding ahead to the nine yard line it'll be first and goal for Stanford you watch J.R. Lemon number nine he is a powerful guy that breaks a lot of tackles at 162 yards last week and three touchdowns against against Washington but look at that 6.9 yards Per he attempt, he give the ball a little bit. More. <laughs> <laughs> but he is, you know, but here, here inside the ten is where Stanford struggles running the ball. But they have the tall receiver we've talked about, Evan Moore, at six seven. They like to utilize right down here. First and goal. Edwards from the shotgun. Plenty of time, passing incomplete. Over the head of a Moore, and oh, Edwards oh, man. down. Forcing himself to his feet right there. The protection was good, but finally it broke down. When you hold the ball that long, it is yeah. eventually going to deteriorate. Well, he was trying to get the ball to Evan Moore, but very, very slowly developing play. Just finally just throws it out. And boy, Greg Polly got him right. Absolute got him. The ribs. Those are the ones your mother hates to see. Second down and goal. Hand off to Lemon. Hit behind the line and dropped for a loss in the play. Abby Amiri got penetration and stopped Lemon for a loss. Yeah, what the coach is saying to us yesterday about Victor Abby Amiri, a talented guy, had a nice freshman year, but they said they wanted him to play with more abandon. Play quicker. Don't worry about making the mistake. They said even if you do make a mistake, make it quickly. And he, and he just shot inside there and make a nice stop on J.R. Lemon. His defensive coordinator, Kent Bayer, saying, yeah, don't worry about making a mistake. Just go for it. He did. And it makes it third and goal now from the 11. Edwards in the pocket for the end zone. Intended for Bradford. Incomplete. Good coverage by Ellick. Dwight Ellick had him blanketed. And so with the first and goal at the nine, Stanford loses a couple of yards. As you said, this is where they have difficulty yeah. sometimes, and a field goal attempt is upcoming. Yeah, they just they just can't, they don't seem to run the ball particularly well inside the 10, running well in between, in between the 20s, but have to throw it into the end zone. Michael Scroy has hit three of six, as you see, on the season. This is a 27-yard attempt on its way, and good. So given good field position to start their drive, Stanford stalls a little bit on first and goal, but they come away with three points to take the early lead. Those cheering her name, send the body cheer on high. Shake down the thunder from the sky.
the undertones, the a cappella singing group here on the campus of Notre Dame. It is uh, an American pageant, a football weekend in Notre Dame, all part of the uh, color and tradition of Irish football. Scroy's kickoff will be fielded by Anastasio. Bouncing off a couple of tacklers down to the 20 yard line where the Irish will take over. Two of Tyrone Willingham's four biggest wins at Notre Dame have come at Stanford's expense. In 2002, the Irish returned two interceptions for scores en route to a 31 7 victory. And last season, Notre Dame tallied 57 points, the most during Willingham's tenure. The Irish scored eight touchdowns, including two on fumble returns in a 57-7 victory. They've outscored Stanford 88-14 their last two meetings. And believe me, a lot of those Stanford players remember what happened last year. Nice fake by Quinn. He gets it to Powers Neal, and he takes it 11 yards for a Notre Dame first down. You know, the win by 50 points up, uh, you know, on the farm. It was actually the week after, you know, Stanford played Cal. And, and as we talked to Tyrone Williams yesterday, he thought perhaps Stanford had a big letdown down after their big rival game. And uh, some accused him of running up the score with that 57-7 victory over his old team. And a fake punt in the fourth quarter up by 50. Marcus Freeman, the Irish tight end, a little gimpy as he uh, leaves the field. Well, there's Fasano who had the wonderful game last week as a, you know, he set a record with 155 yards receptions. He's unavailable today with an injured shoulder. And we showed a graphic earlier in the year. They had six tight ends. They may go through them they all this They season. might need them today. <laughs> there's Fasano with that record performance, putting a couple of touchdowns. Marcus Freeman, number 87, up here at the top. He has one guy. Well, Powers Neal. Oh, boy. Wow. You know, and they had a plan in for Marcus Freeman today. Powers Neal picked up the first down. The Irish have it first down at their own 30. This is Walker, and the freshman stopped for no gain by David Bergeron. Okay, David Bergeron does not stay blocked. A couple of times he gets hit initially, but he just kind of sheds blocks. And one of the things that Bill Dietrich, the offensive coordinator, said to us yesterday from Notre Dame, if we're going to run the football with any kind of success, we're going to have to sustain our blocks. You know, we're making initial contact, but we're not staying with them. He just kind of fi fights and hops right over a block and makes a, a, a tackle for a one-yard loss. Try to cut him, and he just hopped over to make the play. Walker, the other side. A little better result as he picks up three or four yards. Yeah, I like Darius Walker. You know, he burst on the scene a few weeks ago in that start against Michigan where he had over 100 yards. And he hasn't been, you know, as flashy the last few weeks and did have the fumble last week. But you see 354 yards leading the team by a long shot. He's the only one that's gained over 100. Walker out. He said that uh, he wanted to play as a freshman, wasn't sure whether he was ready to play. Suddenly he was in the game against Michigan and gained, what, 100 yards or yeah. more than 100 yards. It all went by in a flash. A Five wide receivers, empty backfield. Quinn in the shotgun. Fires across the middle intended for Holiday incomplete. <laughs> Carl Holiday, we've there's one of those marvelous athletes that he just not have been able to utilize much. Only two catches on the year, right, Tom? For two Carl catches, Holiday. 21 yeah. yards. Not seen him throw the ball yet. A guy that uh, was drafted for Major League Baseball, even though he hadn't played baseball since high school in the last baseball draft. So, you know he's a good athlete. Clock. Fitzpatrick under the rush. And Marrero makes a fair catch. Fitzpatrick went down, but no flag. I don't know how that wasn't blocked. Yeah. Somehow he got it through the on rushing men. Wusu was yeah. there putting the pressure on. You're right. Wusu was there, and, and I think he just, just whiffed, just missed it. He blocked two punts last week, and he should have blocked that one. But Stanford's in front. Notre Dame has allowed its opponents to score again for the five of the six games this season. Fitzpatrick's punt nearly blocked by Wusu, and I don't understand why this wasn't running into the kicker, though. Well, first, he didn't tip it. You know, it could have been running into the kicker, but he certainly should have blocked it. If you don't tip it, that should have been running the kicker and penalty. But tell you, tell you what, uh, Buddy Tevens have had some good special teams this season. Three touchdowns on special teams. They blocked four kicks. Third in the nation on kickoff return average. And Notre Dame has struggled with special teams this season. 
Stanford begins from the 21. Four wide receiver formation. Fake a handoff. Edwards in the pocket. Across the middle and caught. McCullum with the catch. And a big gain on first down for Stanford. It covers 24 yards. Zimikowski finally makes the tackle for Notre Dame. A great protection for Trent Edwards and a patient throw. This one took a little bit more than that two and a half seconds that the internal clock that he has is. But great protection and then the inside route off the play action. See his center and his guard doing a real good job. And then just McCollum at 6'4", one of those four or five really tall, big, physical receivers that Stanford has. Fourth leading receiver on the year as the toss to Lemon. And Lemon with a cutback. Inside the Irish 40-yard line down to the 38. A 15-yard run by J.R. Lemon before Goolsby and Curry tracking down. Nicely designed play by Bill Cupid, the offensive coordinator. Kind of a misdirection play. Trying to get Justin Tuck to stay at home. Because Justin's such an aggressive kind of pass rusher. Nice block on Goolsby, too, who finally gets up and makes the tackle. But a big gain, and Stanford moving the ball at will on Notre Dame. McCollum in motion. And Flag will stop the play before it gets started. Mark Bradford, one of those receivers, played point guard of the basketball team as well. Backup point guard. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number four. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Look at Bill Cubitt. Okay, you know, great improvement we saw the raw number but good play calling and then execution by bill cubit and his uh, staff and his team i mean they really kind of keep you on the heels the only thing they they really lack is that power and the punch to run the ball inside the 10. cubit's son the quarterback at western michigan yeah, timeout Notre Dame called a timeout. I think they had 10 men on the they field. They only had 10 yeah. on the field. Yeah. Boy, they so had. they had 12 in the huddle <laughs> earlier, and that was a penalty. Yes. And now they come up with only 10 on defense. And every freshman must take calculus <laughs> at Notre Dame. It was too simple, the math. <laughs> yeah. We'll take a break here. Less than seven minutes remaining. Less than sharp here in the first quarter so far. A penalty for 12 men in the huddle, having to take a timeout there with only 10 on defense. And Stanford moving the ball on them again. Already leading by a field goal. Edwards, a play-action fake. Chased from the pocket. And he unloads it. Okay, great coverage. A two-man route. Just the tight end and Evan Moore out. Two-man right, hoping to catch him on their heels with a good play-action fake, but good coverage by Kent Bear's defense. He'll bring up a second down. Two completions Stanford has, both of them, though, for over 20 yards. And Kyle Orton had five such completions last week. Yeah, the big plays led Purdue to victory over Notre Dame. That was one of the things the Irish coaches were hoping to eliminate against Stanford, giving up the big play. Edwards now under center, second down and 15. Short drop, his pass on target and caught Camarillo. Camarillo upended by Quentin Burrell, but not until he has another big Stanford gain. The big play is coming in bunches. That one, 36 yards. Three completions. One one for 28, one one for 24, and that one for 36. Again, just a perfect, uh, you know, really perfect throw out in front of him. And Evan Moore made a nice block. Yeah, not, not wasting his six foot seven. Did he make a block or did he get blocked? Well, it doesn't matter. He got in the way. <laughs> he got in the way. He couldn't make the play, but... Yeah, there's a bevy of good receivers. That's more than two. Oh, really? A bevy of good receivers for Stanford. Well, now let's see if they can punch it into the end zone. That's where they failed the last time they were first and goal. This time they get Lemon inside the five-yard line where he's tackled by Derek Curry. This is a really efficient offense for Buddy Teven. You see their touchdown drive, you know, average 67 yards. So what it tells you, they're efficient. They don't make a lot of mistakes on those long drives. You know, they, they convert third downs, and they come up with big plays. We've seen a few of those so far in this drive. Tevens knows about offense. He was Steve Spurrier's offensive coordinator at Florida for a while and has been head coach at Tulane, Dartmouth, and Maine in addition to Stanford. Hand off to Lemon. Stopped at the two-yard line. It'll be third down and goal. Well, two inside runs to J.R. Lemon. Trying to force the issue. 
And I think if Stanford's going to become the kind of team that I think everybody around the farm wants them to, they're going to have to be able to run the ball down in here with some authority. We talk about the offensive line and good pass protectors, but they've developed as pretty good run blockers as well. Key third down play. Boniface at fullback. The tailback is Lemon. And Edwards raising up calls a timeout. He wanted to get the ball to Evan Moore, but Notre Dame was going to double cover him. So I think you know did the right thing, didn't waste it, didn't force the issue, called a timeout, and go talk to your head coach. So there is Edwards speaking with Buddy Tevens. And the Sanford Cardinal leading. But Tom, let's go back and look at that forced timeout a moment. But this is one of Stanford's favorite formations down here inside the five. Two tight ends, Evan Moore up here. They want to either throw the fade or the slant. But the double coverage here, the play's no good, so Trent Edwards calls a timeout. And I think it's a good decision by Trent Edwards. So it remains third down and goal from the Irish two. A six-play drive so far that's covered 75 yards. Three pass completions in the game for Edwards, which have averaged almost 30 yards of completion. Good running quarterback, too. In the end zone. Incomplete. Just got drilled. I think it was in Dukwe. In Dukwe did indeed jar the ball loose as the two Stanford receivers came together. So it had to be a mix up there too, didn't yeah, it? Right down here, he's trying to get the ball to McComb. Has it for a moment. Then in Dukwe, number 18, goes high and just separates it from the ball. Ball if it gets popped up, it's inter it's intercepted because you have four blue jerseys around them. In Dukwe and Jackson, but Evan Moore was right there next to McCollum too. That brought some extra defenders along as well. So Scory will attempt his second field goal. Good goal line defense again by the Irish. And the field goal is good. So Stanford has dominated the first quarter so far, but they have only six points to show for it. Nothing Cardinal. And the last time Stanford won here in South Bend, 1992, when Bill Walsh led 19th ranked Stanford in to face 7th rated Notre Dame. Reggie Brooks and the Irish took a 16 to nothing lead late in the first half. But quarterback Steve Stenstrom led Stanford to 33 unanswered points as the Cardinal won 33 16, Notre Dame's sole loss of the year. Two coaching legends there, Bill Walsh and Lou Holtz. Had a nice meeting with Bill Walsh this week. Asked him about the, the nomenclature. Where did the West Coast offense come from? The name? He had no idea. <laughs> he thought maybe it was Bill Parcells who called to the West Coast offense. Hoskins and Anastasio awaiting Scroy's kickoff. The Irish need, you know, a, a spark in the special teams. And they've given up some special teams plays this season and today, but they really need a spark on a return. Let's see if that goal line stand. They've only allowed 35% touchdowns in the red zone this season. Another good goal line stand, forcing Stanford to take the field goal. Hoskins will down it in the end zone for the touchback. And Notre Dame will take over at the 20-yard line. At NBCSports.com, click on a special section, NBC's Notre Dame Central, for Pat's analysis, including his nominees for Irish MVP, and you can vote for your choice. Plus, get complete post-game coverage as well as the scoop on upcoming Irish opponents, all at NBCSports.com. Some of my early picks are on defense, <laughs> as you might imagine. Yes. Here's Trent Edwards. Had a nice conversation with him uh, up at the farm, and the guy that's played very well this year. The coaches are really high. All the coaches you talked to about Trent Edwards said this guy is going to be a star. And he's played well this year and a big time future ahead of him. Really strong arm. Los Gatos, California, ranked as the number one high school passer in the nation as a senior. Quinn hit as he delivers and Stovall fell down. Shelton was out there too, as well as a couple of Stanford defenders. Just a little late. Brady Quinn had Maurice Stovall open down the middle, but you know on those play action fakes Sometimes it's hard to get your hips turned. He fakes so much. There's a beautiful fake But it gets rid of the ball a little. They can't get all the mustard on it because I think it was John Alston Sort of double clutch there too, didn't yeah. uh, Quinn and maybe if he released it that first time well, That ball would have been in the air for a good 65 yards to catch up to Maurice Stovall 
Two of four to begin the game for Quinn. They not run the ball either. It's 28 yards rushing. Tried to stretch the defense that time. This time they'll hand it to Ryan Grant deep in the backfield. And he makes it back to the line of scrimmage where he's collapsed by Kevin Schimmelman. Well, you know, one of the keys for Notre Dame today was could the offensive line, would the offensive line sustain those blocks? Early in this game, they have not. There's too many white jerseys coming off blocks, making uh, stops. And Notre Dame, only eight yards rushing on six attempts. This is a good Stanford defense, ranks 11th in the nation in rushing defense and 18th in scoring defense. Ryan Grant back in the lineup for the Irish today. Four carries, 12 yards so far. Much improved Cardinal defense from a year ago. We talked about the offense, but the defense has played a lot better under A.J. Kristoff, the defensive coordinator. Just beat the play clock. Quinn finds a man open. It's Stovall, and he dies for a first down. Maurice Stovall back in the lineup today. Made a key move there to pick up the first. You're right, Tom, because he caught that ball about three yards short of the first down. Safety blitz by Brandon Harrison. You know, but that's why the big cushion there for Maurice Stovall. And then if he doesn't, you know, keep his balance, they punt the football. So one of those little things that get your hand down, keep your legs moving, pick up the first, and save the day. Lee Torrance got him by the shoe tops, but he was able to dive for the first down. Here's Josh Schmidt in at fullback now. Grant the tailback gets the handoff, tries to turn the corner and does. Lowers his shoulder and bangs ahead for an extra couple of yards. He and Otogwe had a pretty good collision right there, and Grant got the best of it. We're going to have to paint his helmet twice next next week. You know, this deep, we talked about defensive improvement for Stanford. And look what they did. You know, 15 points less allowed per game. A.J. Kristoff, the defensive coordinator right there on your screen. You know, the very veteran team. Really good at linebacker in the corners and those, you know, defensive linemen, uh, the guys up front. They thought they were going to be tested today, but they have responded. Notre Dame thought they could run the ball right up the middle, but the front three have done a great job. Second down and four. Again, the run from Grant, and this time he finds a seam and takes it ahead for five yards and a first down. Bergeron, another tackle, along with Schimmelman. We've talked about Ryan Grant, what he means to this team. As much as a... And from his leadership as his tough inside running style. Good block there by Bob Morton. But, you know, a guy who's never complained about his role. He finally got his chance now as a senior. Then, then it's been usurped by the freshman Darius Walker. Walker's in the uh, game at the moment. As you saw Bob Morton. The offensive lineman for the Irish. Short drop. And McKnight. On his way to a good gain and a first down, lost the football. Nothing you can say. You just hit yeah, drop. Perfect throw by Brady Quinn. Right out in front of him. You know, obviously, you know, you always talk about you get the head turned to run before the catch. First things first. Would have been a nice game. Instead, it's second and ten. The Knight had such a big game last week with seven catches and over 100 yards. Leading receiver on the season. Quinn looks over the defense. Looks like Stanford's playing a little press coverage on the wideouts. Instead, they hand it to Walker. And Darius with a short gain. There's Schimmelman again down at the bottom of the stack with Bergeron. Those two inside linebackers doing the bulk of the tackling for the Cardinals so far. And David Bergeron, a guy that, who has really come on this year for the Cardinals as he trots off. But, and Kevin <laughs> Schimmelman and also comes, <laughs> comes off. off and Kevin Schimmelman, number 47, the other linebacker that you talked so well about, Tom, is a guy who's playing his fourth different position for the Cardinal, but he has absolutely found the right spot for him, that inside linebacker position. He's playing right in here now. Third down and nine. Stanford showing blitz. Quinn in the pocket. Stovall can't hang on. Tight coverage that time from a Togway. Great coverage by Togway. But it was the drop pass, really, that, that forced the punt here. They would have, would have been in second and one had not Raymond McKnight dropped the pass on first down. So a careless error, and Notre Dame will give it up again. And I'd be careful about a punt block. We, we, we showed you the graphic of how good they are at blocking kicks. Near, his last punt was nearly blocked by Wuse. Fitzpatrick, punt formation. 
Not much rush from Stanford that time as Marrero feels it at the eight yard line. Nowhere to go. That looked like special teams coverage the way the coaches want it done. Jerome Collins made the tackle a 47 yard punt by Fitzpatrick and zero on the return. Yeah, you know, we said they needed a lift in, in special teams. It didn't necessarily have to be returned, right? You make a stop there inside the 15-yard line. You play some good defense, force a punt, and get good field position. Closing two minutes of the first quarter, and Stanford has moved the ball at will on Notre Dame, but they've had to settle for field goals when they've gotten into the red zone. Three completions for 88 yards for Trent Everett. First down pass, Edwards. Intended for more and incomplete. Defended by Mike Richardson with Preston Jackson out of the game currently and Mike Richardson playing that corner spot. Tom, how about we were talking to Trent Edwards this week about the uh, the injury that he suffered after that Cal game oh. last year. He uh, thought it was just a bruise on the thigh. Went home after the game. It was a little sore, but it kept getting worse. He get, became uh, really ill. Was taken to the emergency room. They had to open it up and drain the button. It was compartmental syndrome, it was called. They had to operate on him three times. Wound up with 60 stitches as J.R. Lemon twists ahead. It'll be third down for Stanford. Mike Richardson makes his second consecutive tackle. You know, and he, and he watched last year's Stanford-Notre Dame game from the hospital. And I thought one of the, the coaches said something interesting. Bill Cobit, the offensive coordinator, said, you know, every one of our team came to visit him in the hospital. He was there for five days. It wasn't just the receivers, wasn't just the running backs, offensive linemen, defensive players. He had emerged as the leader last season, and every single one of his teammates came to visit him. A measure of respect. Four wide receivers here. Edwards facing third down and five. Low snap. He picks it up and whizzes it complete. And a nice move by Bradford. Finally taken down, but he picked up the first down almost to the 25-yard line. Zibikowski on the Notre Dame tackle, but a key third down conversion by the Cardinal. And, and again, the ball out of his Trent's hand so quickly, under two and a half seconds. You know, you get rid of it quickly, you deal it, you throw it accurately, you let the, you guys, your receivers run after the catch. And Mark Bradford, really known as a good runner after the catch. He takes another shot. Boy, he's taken three or four of them in this yeah. first half. Edwards recruited by Tyrone Willingham and Kent Bear. They said, as that one is too tall, they said even 6'7", Evan Moore couldn't get that one. They said Edwards was the most accurate high school passer they had ever seen. 75% uh, of his passes were complete in high school, over 5,000 yards, 58 touchdowns and seven interceptions. And most importantly, he went 26-0 his last two years of high school. Prep All-American at Los Gatos High School in All-State, of course. And as we said earlier, some of the recruiting services rank him the number one passer in the nation. He's only hit four of 11, but for 97 yards, four different receivers. That looks like a false start by the Cardinal. Maybe John Cochran, the left tackle. But Tom, sacrilege, he grew up a Cal fan. He grew up, you know, what he said he hated Stanford. Dead ball, false start, number 78 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Was Cochran with a false start, but uh, set a California state record as a junior when he hit 78% of his passes and uh, finally saw the error of his ways and <laughs> committed to Stanford, he said, because it was the best combination he could find of quality athletics and quality academics. Hard to argue with that. Notre Dame showing a blitz. Curry and Tuck after Edwards, who sets up a screen pass to Tolan. And Tolan hit hard and dropped back at the original line of scrimmage by Derek Landry. Well, what a nice play adjustment by Michael Brewer, number 72, Derek one of the Landry offensive linemen for Stanford. You always talk about the running backs making adjustments and the coach, uh, the uh, quarterbacks. But number 72, Brewer, just kind of stopped right here in the middle screen and just kind of stops, slows down his block, picks up a blocker that allowed him to pick up another five or six yards on the screen play. So Mikhail Brewer or Michael Brewer. And the final second ticks off the clock, and the first quarter comes to a close. 
Buddy Tevens and the Stanford Cardinal moving the ball on Notre Dame, but stalling in the red zone twice. Still at the end of the first quarter, Stanford leads Notre Dame by two field goals. It's the Cardinal six and the Irish nothing. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium right after these messages from your local NBC station. Well, you know, we said two things that the Irish had to do today, right? They had to run the ball and get some balance. First quarter, 22 yards rushing. We'll see what's happened in the first quarter scoring in the, in the wins and losses. Notre Dame has been able to come back to win four of their last six. And they were losing or tied at the end of one. We'll see how this one plays out right now. Stanford facing a third down and eight. Edwards from the gun. Protection good. Pass. Bradford couldn't hold it. Pass was high. Bradford got his hands on it, but couldn't hold on as he fell to the turf. And Stanford will punt. Yeah, you know, Trent Edwards has been a little bit high today. We talk about the height of these wide receivers, but as accurate as he is, and we've been singing his praises, he's been a little bit high. Couldn't quite follow through on that one. But that receiver, Mark Bradford, is 6-2. Earlier, he overthrew Evan Moore at 6-7. Otavagio is first Stanford punt of the day. Carlisle Holiday. Let's it bounce. And it takes a good Stanford bounce. About the 31 yard line where it'll be down. The punt covered 42 yards. Coming to NBC a week from Tuesday. It's the next big thing in television. Don't miss 12 contestants competing to see who can lose the most weight and win a quarter million dollars. That's the biggest loser coming to NBC a week from Tuesday. Tom, why don't you make it 13? <laughs> <laughs> Just jump in. When we talked about one of the matchups, the Irish like Jerome Collins, number 48, the tight end here. They, they think he can have a day in the passing game. Play action fake. Quinn's pass. Caught. Collins. That's what they were looking for, Pat. Jerome Collins wide open across the middle for 21 yards. A big play, the first of the game by Notre Dame. Now, aren't you glad we were paying attention when yeah. the coaches were talking to us yesterday? Good, good play action fake again by Brady Quinn, who, by the way, is really becoming quite a good play action faker, not just on the passes, but even when he hands the ball to the backs. But no, nobody touching, nobody jamming the wide receiver. Good design by Bill Dietrich and a good pa pass play by Brady Quinn. Only the second catch of the season for Collins. Getting more playing time today in the absence of Fasano. Walker, Darius Walker. First down run. That's him maybe five yards. Tackled by Newberry. You know, Darius Walker, we got the chance to talk to him yesterday. Kind of like, uh, you know, a runway model. Just, just not, not afraid of all the attention. Uh, the game's not too big for him. The environment's not too big for him, even as a freshman. Will be a, a performing arts major at Notre Dame and is used to the limelight, was in some high school plays. And if you'd like to really get a <laughs> slice of uh, what Darius Walker is all about, we have a halftime feature on him today. And here he is, Walker, with a nice move. And he's down to the 24-yard line. Gain of 19 by Darius Walker, the talented freshman from Georgia. And that matches the longest run of the season for the Irish, also held by number three, Darius Walker. Good block by 74, Dan Stevenson, as he comes around the corner. Then a terrific move by Darius Walker, and still good ball security. Watch the block here. Stevenson and Collins, 48. He kind of wraps on. So it's the first real big crease they've been able to create in this Cardinal defense. Irish with their best drive of the game. Five carries, nearly 30 yards for Walker. Shelton in motion on first down. Play action fake in the pass. Quinn under pressure, could not find Collins. Okay, Collins is lucky he didn't catch that one because he was going to get lit up by one of the Stanford defenders. But Jerome Collins, a guy who played linebacker the last couple of years for the Irish, and they think he's got good speed, a big body, and uh, just like the matchups. If they can just get give him a chance to get over the middle with some protection, he's a very athletic guy who can get up the field and create big plays at the tight end position. Big senior from Warrenville, Illinois, 6'4", nearly 260 pounds. Fasano watches from the sideline. Collins in motion. Hand to Walker. Walker spinning his way for a gain of uh, three yards. Schimmelman and Newberry. 
Jared Dewberry, number 17 for the Cardinal. The guy he started as a walk-on at Stanford from Minneapolis. Tyrone Willingham recruited him and ran out of scholarships. So his parents actually had to pay for that first quarter of school. And as you can appreciate at Stanford, it's a bit pricey. <laughs> but earned a scholarship right after the first quarter and has kind of elevated his play and became a team captain this year. So from walk on to team captain. Third down and seven. Grant at running back. Blitz from Stanford. Quinn picks it up and then the pass is dropped by Collins. Well, you see wide open. Wide open indeed. And another miscue. It's a couple of drop passes by the Irish today. It means that Fitzpatrick will come on to attempt a field goal. And the first drop pass cost him a first down, and this one cost him a chance to keep the drive alive because he would have picked up the first down after that catch. And the Stanford blocks a lot of kicks. Fitzpatrick to attempt the field goal. 38-yard attempt, and Fitzpatrick dead center. So the Irish finally on the board. With 12 minutes, 14 seconds to go in the second quarter. But Stanford continues to lead. It's the Cardinals six and the Irish three. Notre Dame just kicking a field goal. And the Irish now will kick off. And a new kicker for Notre Dame, Bobby Rankis, a sophomore from Dallas. Replacing Carl Joya to kick off and coach Willingham telling us uh, they have not had an unreturnable kickoff all season long. He wants Rankus to bury it in the end zone if he can. Yeah. Rushing and McCutcheon are deep for Stanford. The nation's third leading kickoff returners. Not a very pretty one and it bounces short only to the seven yard line picked up by rushing and rushing. Finally hit hard, but almost to the 30-yard line. Had a seam for a moment. And the Cardinal will take over. But first, let's check in with Jimmy Roberts in New York. Jimmy, so that was one of the big matchups of the day, and uh, Oklahoma shutting out the Longhorns. Stanford with a three point lead and a first down. Edwards chased from the pocket, manages to elude the rushers, and a nice cutback. He turned it into a positive gaining play. Greg Pauley caught him by the shoe tops. You know, Greg Pauley missed him, but a hustle play missed him the first time, but just kept hustling and hunking and chunking. Is I don't know if those are words or not, but he, <laughs> Greg Pauley like missed him here. Yeah. <laughs> he missed him. Watch him right. He missed him there, but he doesn't stop. He just kind of keeps going and gets him the second time. So he was, we were talking to Greg Pauley yesterday. We asked him to characterize his plays. He says, you know, I just yep. keep keep hustling. That was a good example of it. He's from Waukesha, Wisconsin, the same hometown, same high school as Paul and Morgan Hom, the gymnasts. Edwards drills that when the ball comes loose and out of bounds. Will it be ruled a completion and a fumble? Yes, it looks like it will be. Richardson knocked the ball loose from Evan Moore, but they'll rule it a completion. The first and Stanford retains possession. Excuse me, Tom. First catch for Evan Moore, whom we highlighted at the very beginning of the show, who came in with 16 catches and just a strong, physical guy. Watch the tape and he catches everything they throw at him. You know, the one-handed catch, he makes the easy ones, the tough ones, great footwork. Great hands and uh, deceptively fast, the uh, coaches say. Perhaps doesn't look fast, but seems to get the job done. Power forward on the Stanford basketball team. Fumble! Tolan went after it, and I think recovered it. Yes, he did. Kenneth Tolan, after Edwards fumbled it, coming away from center. Well, a smart play. I usually, you, could, you know, think that's a pretty good thing for Stanford guys, right? But a smart <laughs> play by Kenneth Tolan because he didn't try to pick this up. He just jumped right on there, didn't even risk it. Batched uh, snap between Edwards and his center and Brian Head, but told him there to make recovery. So Jay Ottaveggio for his second punt. And Carlisle Holiday waiting to field it for the Irish. Notre Dame's defense finally stiffening after Stanford had two long drives, resulting in field goals earlier. Holiday lets it bounce again. Short punt, takes a lateral bounce, and will be downed 
after it only covered 27 yards. You know, it's two times Carlisle Holiday has not been able to field a punt. And as we talked about, there's a guy who needs to touch the ball for the Irish, but has missed the last two punts. Of course, that one was very short, only 27 yards. Finally down by Danahay of uh, Stanford. Running into the kicker, number 48, defense. Five-yard penalty. Yardage will result in a first down. Oh, boy. That's Jerome Collins. He dropped. I didn't even see the flag, Pat. Yeah, neither did I. He had dropped a pass a little earlier. Did he get blocked into him? I mean, that's clearly a penalty there, but I don't know if he was actually blocked into him. No, he just kept just stumbling. stumbling yeah, yeah. That's a good call. Well, there was a hold there on him, too. I'll tell you that. He was he was held by Bergeron, but... And then Notre Dame defender, Carlos Campbell, late gut coming on the field, but he did get out there, and it's first down from the 39-yard line. And an end around to Bradford. Got away from Curry. And finally... Hauled down from behind by Zibikowski at the 45-yard line, a gain of 15 yards. So running into the kicker gives Stanford the first down, and then they reel off a play of 15 on first down. Yeah, and again, another nicely sequenced play. Again, Curry had him actually well covered. It was chasing him the entire way, but a great cut back there by Mark Bradford. Watch Curry chase him down here at 49. Stop and start. Really good after the catch or when you hand him the ball. That's what coaches talk about. Like the running back. Bradford in motion. Tolan on the handoff. Breaks to the outside. And Kenneth Tolan. An eight-yard gain. Dwight Ellick hauls him down. Let's go to Lewis. All right, Tom. Thanks. Well, Stanford trainer Charlie Miller's been awfully busy trying to get their junior running back, J.R. Lemon, back on the field. He came off earlier in the game uh, complaining of a knee problem. He took a shot to the right knee, the outside of the right knee. They've taped him up. They've tried to put some extra padding over the kneecap, but he keeps walking around, and something is not right. They continue to work on him. He's available to come back in, but right now Lemon doesn't look good. Tom? Tolan is performing well in his... Absence in the backfield. Edwards sacked at the 50-yard line by Derek Curry. You know, well-designed blitz and then good timing by Derek Curry. You know, Derek Curry is a guy that makes not necessarily a lot of tackles. I mean, the second leading tackle, not a lot of tackles, but they always seem to be important and significant, right up the middle. I mean, what they did was on, on that defensive series, they, they forced the offensive lineman to take some. You know, the, the defensive line, they kind of pulled him away, and it opened up a gaping hole for Derek Curry as the inside linebacker. And the linebacker from Sealy, Texas, blitzing through to throw Edwards for the big loss. It's third and 12. Third and 13, we'll call it. One second on the play clock. Didn't make it. Delay a game, Stanford. Things unraveling all of a sudden here for the Cardinal. Yeah, they, you know, they get a, a, bar, a break. Delay of game. Number five offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Got a break on the, on the penalty. They retain possession, but now two successive good defensive series by the, uh, by the Fighting Irish. So Edwards with a word from his head coach, Buddy Tevens. Now third down and 17. Edwards has hit 6 of 14 for 109 yards to six different receivers. Five wide receivers, empty backfield from the shotgun. Edwards steps up, a lot of room to run if he wants to. I would say he wasn't sure he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when you just get down. Kyle Buttonzak makes the tackle. There was a lot of green space in front of him, but he had 17 yards to try to make up. Yeah, good, very good coverage. Real, real soft on the third and long. You know, they were not going to get beat for a big play like they were last week against Purdue. And then absolutely nowhere for Trent Edwards to throw the ball. Artavegio's punt. Remember the last time they ran into him and gave Stanford a first down. This time, no pressure on him, and he sails it toward Holiday, who lets it bounce. And it takes a dead and bounce, and then it'll be down inside the five-yard line. 
Excellent special teams coverage. McCutcheon downed it. Punt covered 45 yards, no return. And Notre Dame backed up, trailing Stanford by three. Hand off to Powers Neal, the fullback. A couple of tough yards to the five. Up for the center of the Stanford defense. As you say the center of the Stanford defense, you usually talk about 96, their nose tackle, Baba Tunde Oshinowa. All 320 pounds of the middle, kind of clogging it up, clogging up the sink in there. <laughs> Naperville, Illinois. So he, he stand, if, you're, if you're a linebacker, we've seen two good ones in Schimmelman and Bergeron. You, you'd love to see a guy like that up front who doesn't get knocked back. Keeps those blockers off of you. Second down and eight. Quinn, quick pass to the outside to McKnight. McKnight will be close to the first down. We'll see where they spot it. Good They're block. Spotted just short, it looks like. And, and Tom, a really nice block by Maurice Stovall. I mean, you know, a big receiver at 6'5, 227 pounds. And if he's had, he hadn't had the kind of moments that he'd like as a, as a receiver, but as a blocker, and allowed Raymond McKnight to almost pick up the first down. And Bill Diedrich saying to us yesterday, his offensive coordinator, that that was one of the things that really pleased him about Stovall's development as a physical player. To be able to get those kind of blocks. Third down and a yard. Grant, the tailback, handoff to him. And he picks his way to the 15 and a first down. Bergeron tackled him. Not much room there, but Grant found a little seam to slip through and pick up the first down. You know, you, you sense his teammates are happy to have Ryan Grant back. He just adds a sense of uh, physicalness for the running game. It's like he's taking himself out of the lineup there. Looks an equipment malfunction or something. He's Whoops. <laughs> sending Quinn's Walker in. in. Yeah, Brady Quinn, Quinn's going, where's my... Uh... <laughs> now, that's another timeout for not having enough men in the field. So Notre Dame has yeah. to spend his second timeout. Grant came out and Walker... Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not that's not the coach not yet fault. on the field. It looked like Grant took himself out either something wrong with an, with his equipment or he was injured in any event Walker didn't see him coming out and the Irish have to use their second time out of the half trailing Stanford by three All right Lewis replaced a tailback by the freshman Darius Walker Hand to Walker trying to get a block from powers Neal with a cutback on the play Kevin Schimmelman makes the Stanford tackle as Jimmy Walker, the dad and former Arkansas football player, watches. You know the story, and if you don't, you can get the full story on Darius in our halftime feature. But his parents moved to South Bend from Georgia to be with their son. But what a delightful guy, though. Bright, engaging, smart kid who uh, has had a very, very good freshman season thus far. Grant back in the game for Notre Dame. He's the lone setback. Fake it to him. Quinn rolling out. He's going to keep it. Oh. They, they cannot afford to lose Brady Quinn. Uh, those are plays that he just got to duck and get down. Svitek and Austin, the stop. Uh, Brady Quinn. The really good defense. Everybody stayed at home on the backside. Uh, Notre Dame has run this boot very successfully this year, but no one there. But see, that you just don't lower your shoulder going into a linebacker, do you? Yeah, Brady 6'4 and 225, and with those uh, powerful looking arms, he's done, hadn't learned that slide yet. <laughs> that still didn't answer the question. <laughs> you slide there, don't you? No? You do. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Brady. He's still a little inexperienced. He's just a sophomore now, man. He hadn't learned that you can't take on those linebackers and defensive linemen. Is a fumble there? Grant. Alston stopped him and uh, couldn't tell if the ball came loose or not. It looked like they were scrambling around for it, but uh, Grant still had the ball, so it's going to be very close to the first down, and they got it. Got the first down. Again, you know, he's such a good, strong inside rusher. You know, just angular lean and stretches. That's what uh, 
why it looked like he had fumbled. He stretched that football out and he got the stretch for the first down. He got it by about a half a yard and he stretched three quarters of a yard. Coach Willingham wanted some leadership. Ryan Grant gave it to him. Made a play. You know, he's given it this team even when he's not playing. Though. He's one of those guys that just makes everybody around him better. So from the 25 yard line, Irish with the first down. Darius Walker. Walker to that sideline and down to the 40 yard line to the 41 before he's taken out of bounds by Schimmelman. You know, the offensive line kind of getting into a rhythm. It's that stretch play that. Notre Dame likes to get the ball to the, their tailback this time. Darius Walker very, very deep in the backfield, man for man blocking. You get a block from the downfield by a wide receiver, you have a chance for a nice run. Collins, uh, the tight end, was out there in front of him. 16 yard game. And so he's had a 19 yard run and a 16 yard run. And this is a team that has not had many long runs this season. And that's a good, uh, good rushing day in the first half of the Irish backfield. And they needed that bounce. Remember, 150 yards is kind of a watershed number for them. Five Oops. yards of carry so far. Quinn is sacked back at the 35-yard line by John Alston. And John Alston is what they call their rushing, and, and you see why. He's got speed off the corner. He's a good cover guy, too, but they really like to bring him on, on real sharp angles off the corner and absolutely nowhere for Brady Quinn to go. He is the leading sack master for the Cardinal defense. Alston, that's his third of the season. He's a junior from Shreveport, Louisiana. And that's an area that they've really improved as well. A.J. Kristoff, the defensive coordinator, you know, is really getting after the quarterbacks with a lot of blitzes. They were last in the Pac-10 last year in that category with just 22. So with the big defensive play, it's now second down and 16 for the Irish. They're going to run it. Walker. Walker breaks free. Shook another tackler. Still on his feet. Twisting his way close to the first down. Damn. Good tough run, but but Brady Quinn again continues his ball handling. I mean, he faked Brady Quinn faked that bootleg. Tom, he took three Cardinal defenders with him. What a run by Walker! Here you see the brilliance of the young man that broke Herschel Walker's high school record for touchdowns in Georgia. And he broke through a Togway, the free safety, his tackle, a Togway, the number 21 for Stanford, really a, a punishing tackler. Came up about a half yard short of the first down, Pat. Nine carries for 69 yards. And Brady Quinn sneaking ahead for the first down. Well, you know, you, you, you can just kind of tell when offensive linemen get in the flow of the game. And I think offensive linemen like, like this type of game, a close game where you're going to run the football. You're not throwing it 40 or 50 times a game. And you see Dan Stevenson and Sullivan and Morton and Harris and Lavore just kind of getting into, into the flow, just like the running backs do. With some uh, big plays, some clutch plays on this drive. Notre Dame trying to score before the half ends. Just over two minutes left. First down at the 45 of Stanford. Quinn scrambling to his left. Going downfield for McKnight, but the pass way out of bounds. McKnight covered by Stanley Wilson. Talking about this Notre Dame offensive line. Most offensive lines, they, they, they hang out. They have offensive linemen night. This, they do something a little different. When they go out to dinner on Thursday nights, they actually take the quarterback. You know, most places the quarterback takes the line. They said he hadn't learned yet. The <laughs> quarterback is supposed to be the guy that's taking them out. <laughs> Every Thursday night, all the offensive line and Brady Quinn go out for dinner. I think Brady might be playing possum on yeah, that one. He shrewd. knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> that could get some serious coin when you start buying those uh, linemen oh, yeah. dinner. Particularly when it's not one of those all-you-can-eat buffets. <laughs> Stanford showing a blitz on this second and ten. Quinn sees it. The whistle stops play. Didn't get the playoff in time and the indecision on which play to get in. Dead ball, delay of game, offense number ten. Five-yard penalty, still second down. You know, Tom, we saw that incredible performance here last week by Kyle Orton. And, and one of the things, those subtle things that he did so well, when he got out of the huddle, he still had 14, 15 seconds on the clock. So never had that kind of problem. Both these teams thus far have had one of those today. And you need to get the in and out of the huddle and give yourself a good 14, 15, 16 seconds to be able to call audibles. That's what he's doing here. With enough time. 
Tried to set up that level screen pass, and Stanford nearly intercepted it. They were ready for that one big time. Now, it's time for the counterpunch. That's the strong safety, Brandon Harrison. But, you know, Notre Dame has a fake bubble screen, and they throw the ball deep downfield. Matt Shelton caught, caught an earlier one this season for a touchdown, but that was perfectly read by Stanley Wilson. Brady Quinn looking at the play on his armband. There aren't too many of them on third and 15. You know, first and 10, you can use all 170, but on third and 15, they're just a very little. select group. <laughs> yes, yes. Third down and 15. The Irish have made a couple of big plays to convert. They'll need another one here. Quinn has plenty of time. Winds up and heaves it downfield. Jump ball and incomplete as Raymond McKnight. TJ Rushing timed it perfectly. You know, McKnight has a good, you know, the, the size advantage over Rushing, but Rushing, the defensive back, just did a real good job, patient job, waiting, 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 and stepped in front of him right at the last moment. He's waiting. And then a good job. Ball, yeah, yeah, just kind of tips it away. <laughs> so, it out of bounds so it couldn't be caught on yeah. the rebound. D.J. Fitzpatrick will punt his fourth of the game, and Marrero awaits it. Angles it toward the sideline. Marrero lets it go out of bounds, and it'll be spotted at about the 13-yard line. Good directional punt again by D.J. Fitzpatrick. 37 yards, but it backs Stanford up. 136 till halftime. And right now, the... Irish defense on the field for the final minute 36 of the half and Stanford starting from the Cardinal 13 yard line with a three point lead. And playing three bend defense. Draw play to Tolan. Lost yardage on the play. Victor Abbey Mary made another good defensive play as we check the uh, quarterback stats in the first half. We talk about the, you know, the accuracy of Trent Edwards, but only six of 14 for him. Over 100 yards, some big plays. And Brady Quinn coming off of. Outstanding performance last week in terms of yards over 400. Kind of a solid numbers protecting the football. Still need to get the ball in the end zone. You know, they've been really good. The Irish have in between the tens, just kind of punching it in. We could say the same for Stanford, who had first and goal on two different occasions and had to settle for a field goal each time. Tolan runs. And we're inside the final minute. Abby Amiri, another tackle. Yeah, I think Notre Dame should call timeout if they haven't, because, again, they're going to force, hopefully, force a punt. Did they, did they call timeout? Yes. Yeah, I think they did. Yep. So the final timeout for the Irish with 52 seconds remaining. And Notre Dame hoping to get the ball back and get something going. They have the Cardinal backed up with a big third down upcoming when we return to Notre Dame Stadium. That's it. Yeah, the band of the Fighting Irish ready for its halftime show shortly. And uh, how about that? Play the uh, tuba, you get to wear the beret. Very cool. 6-3 game, and it's third down for Stanford with a third and eight. Notre Dame has used its final timeout. Tuck up top. Edwards, draw play. Tolan. Nothing there. Greg Pauley made the tackle. As the Cardinal hope to uh, let that clock run down as far as it can because Notre Dame does not have any more timeouts. So electing to keep it on the ground. Safe play. Safe call. You know, I, I would actually, this is the time I would actually use the clock. Take the penalty. You, know, you, get, you, get, you get half the distance, right? Where's the ball? And there's a guy that still remains very dangerous. Punt the ball out of bounds, too. I wouldn't give a chance. They should take the penalty here. And I think still 12 seconds remaining on the 25-second clock. There's the play clock. And as you'd expect, Stanford's going to do the smart thing. Yes, indeed. That's going to leave Notre Dame with uh, only four seconds in the half. I think if you're Notre Dame, you, you, that changes the complexion. You must go for the punt block, or you should go for the punt block here, right? Stanford called a timeout there with the uh, play clock expiring, so they're not penalized. Spend the timeout. Well, Buddy Tevens has to feel a little bit better about this first half than he did a year ago. His team lost by 50 points last year up in Stanford. Had the near upset of USC. 
They're definitely a better team. I mean, you know, they're, they're playing much better defense. We saw the offensive turnaround. And he's got some good young players too to, to, to build the program on around. And coming up uh, soon, the Lexus halftime show. Jimmy Roberts with uh, news, scores, highlights from this big Saturday in college football, and that feature on the Irish freshman running back Darius Walker coming up on the Lexus halftime show with four ticks of the clock remaining. First thing, the snapper, just you know, get it online to your punter, and just a quick kick. You're not necessarily worried about anything on this. Just get it off. Automagio in punt formation. Myers came after him, but he got it off. Carlisle Holiday picks it up on the hop. Flag is down. So we'll check out the penalty as Lee Torrance on special teams made the tackle for Stanford. Illegal block in the back on Notre Dame. Well, completely a different kind of game for Tyrone Willingham this this game than last, right? Right. And Stanford will uh, decline the penalty, and the first half will come to a close. Well, a first half that ends without a touchdown being scored. Two field goals for the Cardinal, one for the Irish. Buddy Tevens and Stanford heading to the locker room in their first road game of the season, leading the Irish at Notre Dame Stadium 6-3. to three. Now, and, you, and you start with Notre Dame for kickoff coverage. They've, they've had two kickoff return for touchdowns against them this season. This has been an area of emphasis this week. A new kicker, and they're looking for better coverage. And Bobby Rinkus will kick it off for the second time with Rushing and McCutcheon, the deep men for Stanford. And Rushing from the six. Has a seam and one man, Ellick. Slowed him down and then the Irish pursuit gets him. So it looked like uh, Stanford had a chance to make a big play on the kickoff return. Instead, Ellick holds on until help arrives. Yeah, Ellick really stayed home. We were talking to Ty Willingham yesterday and he was saying, hey, once the guy catches it, he wanted his team down at the 30-yard line. That, that was kind of the defining moment for him. To say, y you catch it, where are you guys when you catch it? And that's pretty good coverage. And so they really end up stopping him at the 20-yard line because uh, Alex stays at home. So good coverage there. And, it, and they spent a lot of time practicing kickoff coverage this week. So first down, Stanford at the 20-yard line. J.R. Lemon is back in at tailback. And he gets the call here for a couple of yards. Okay, one of the interesting things is as we look at the quarterback stats in the first half. Trent Edwards was well, hot on those first two drives, averaging 29 yards per completion, but it's cooled off since then. The, the, the Irish have gotten some pretty good pressure on him, even though they haven't sacked him but once. They certainly have hit him. Mike Richardson remains in at a quarterback in place of Preston Jackson. Second down, Edwards across the middle, wide open to the tight end. That's Traverso who catches it for a big first down for Stanford. They go to the tight end, and Burrell hauls him down after 29 yards. Yeah, you know, the Irish have been vulnerable to that vertical play last week by wide receivers, this time by Traverso, the tight end, who's primarily a blocking tight end. And believe it or not, his goal, Matt's goal, was to be the best blocking tight end in the Pac-10, but he gets up the field in the vertical game for a big catch and a first down. Into Irish territory, 48-yard line, first down, Cardinal. Short drop, quick strike, caught by Moore, Evan Moore down the sideline. Alec wrestles him down at the 20-yard line. Yeah, wrestles is the right word. You, you see kind of the strength, 235 pounds is Evan Moore. A wide receiver now, not a tight end. Yeah, exactly. Only his second catch of the game. But 27 it, yards, too bad. Big cushion, right? You give him the ball, and then... Try to tackle him. I mean, he, he just he turns into a, like a big old tight end or fullback. And Dwight Ellick, you know, 185 pounds, gives up about 60 pounds. And no problem playing two sports at Stanford. Evan telling us that uh, it was encouraged 
by both coaching staffs. That time Edwards uh, passed it before Moore even turned around. Uh, you know, that's the second time those guys have not been on the same page. A little bit surprising because they've seemed to be in rhythm right. in their first four games. But two times Moore has seen something different than Trent Edwards has. It's one of those read things, you know, you get a certain kind of coverage, you break it up. And, and as I said, Moore was going deep and Edwards threw a quick out. Moore didn't start playing football until he was a sophomore in high school. It was interesting. He, on his day off Mondays, he shoots baskets just to kind of stay in form for basketball season. Yeah. And then uh, as soon as football's over, right to the hardwood. Running plate 11. Notre Dame defends it well. Derek Curry was there in a hurry, and so was Brandon Hoyt. And Derek Curry trying to strip the ball. That's why the Irish have been so good. You, you, you gang tackle, you slow a guy down, and Kent Bears guys just kind of strip the ball. And remember, the first four games, they had they forced 16 turnovers, which led the NCAA. In the last two games, they have not forced a turnover. There's the stat. 52 points off those 16. A big cushion again up here for the for uh, Evan Moore. Third down and 12. Edwards looks Moore's way and said swings it complete to Lemon out of the backfield. And Lemon tackled after a gain of only a couple yards, a sure tackle by Carlos Campbell. And good pressure again by Trent Edwards. You know, on third and 12, you don't want to throw that kind of pass, but it was taken away downfield because of the rush. Justin Tuck getting after him. He said he was going to have to have a big game. He hasn't sacked him yet, but he's put a lot of pressure and a lot of hits after the throw. So another field goal attempt. Stanford again moves the ball down the field and has to settle for the three-point attempt. Scroy has hit the other two. This one the longest yet from 38 yards. On its way, and it is good. So Stanford takes the second-half kickoff. Again, goes down the field. Get the field goal to go up 9-3. Student section at Notre Dame in their green T-shirts. Trying to rally the Irish here with their first possession of the third quarter upcoming. Sounds like a Red Sox score, doesn't it? 9-3. <laughs> Scroy will kick off. And deep are Hoskins and Anastasio. Scroy with a good kick. Anastasio takes it a yard deep. Chase Anastasio had a hand down trying to keep his balance. Falls to the turf short of the 30-yard line. Where Notre Dame will take over, trailing 9-3. Nice return, but it could have been more. Yeah, Tom. almost it really could have been more. Chase Anastasio playing with a broken foot. Just got tripped up, but there was a nice scene for Anastasio and one of the better returns of the year. So another field goal by Scroy, which matches his career high. Three today. She's done twice previously, including BYU this season. It's the Cardinal up nine to three. Ryan Grant on the first carry of the second half. Tackled by Atogwe. Yeah, Togwe is a guy that just, you know, when, you, when he hits you, you, you just go down. He's the leading tackler over the past couple of years. And he just creates so many negative plays. He's forced 11 fumbles over the last 26 games. Look at this. Togwe is from Canada. His parents immigrated from Nigeria to Canada back in 1976. Grew up in Ontario. Grew up watching Notre Dame play. Was a Michigan fan. Didn't much care for Notre Dame. His uh, home in Windsor, Ontario, right across from Detroit. Brandon Harrison makes that tackle. Nice conversation with the Togway this week. Uh, Pre-med student. would like to play in the NFL, but didn't get that opportunity going to medical school. Ran uh, track at Stanford his first three years at Togway. It's a very nice collection of comic books, Tom. <laughs> it's not some of them, that's for sure. Seven, seven or eight thousand, huh? Seven or eight thousand comic books he collects. He's made about three trips to his ancestral home of Nigeria. He said it really gives you a good perspective on life as an North American citizen in his case from Canada. Brady Quinn on third down completes the pass to Collins and the tight end using his blockers gets it to midfield where Harrison finally makes the stop 
A gain of 14 and an Irish first down. Well, Tyrone Willingham told Lewis Johnson at halftime, hey, we can't drop the ball. This is the exact same play that Jerome Collins blocked, uh, dropped a moment ago. Just kind of settling over the middle. This one, he secures it. The umpire ducks. And then you see what you, the coaches are duck, excited yeah. about. Yeah, <laughs> you hit right in the nose. But the coaches have been talking about Jerome Collins and what a weapon he can be. And you kind of see why they're happy about what he can do. From midfield, first down, Notre Dame. Handed off to Ryan Grant. Grant plowing ahead for four yards on first down. Well, the Irish over 100 yards rushing now. And, and, you know, last week they threw the ball so well, 432 yards by Brady Quinn, but you know, they didn't get anything on, on the board. They're running the ball better, still not scoring, but keeping this game close. They're not allowing Stanford's offense really to get in any rhythm because they're keeping the ball away from them. Four minutes more of possession in the first half. up a blitzer and Quinn has a man wide open and Shelton or Samarza had it for a moment or Shelton was Shelton it could have been a touchdown or it could have been an interception e either one I mean unbelievable time for Brady Quinn Matt Shelton kind of battling an injury still in still their deep threat averaging over or 28 yards a catch but lots of time because he gets it over him it's a touch but then I thought was it a Togway? A Togway yeah. yeah Togway had a chance to did he tip it? this thing off? Yes, he did. He did. Yeah, Ball right changing off. flight and Shelton unable to get a bead on it after it was deflected by a Togway. Just barely. It, it, as good as Quinn has played the last few weeks, he's missed some guys open for touchdowns again that time to Matt Shelton. Another blitz and again Grant picked up the blitzer and allowing Samarja to catch it for a first down. Alston tackled him but not until Jeff had a first down as Quinn has helped to his feet. By Mark Lavore. Yeah, strong presence in the, the uh, pocket by Brady Quinn. Y you know, you, you know you're gonna get drilled. He he saw that guy, he felt him, but he had the courage just to kind of hang in there, hang in there, and get at the ball to Samar to his wide receiver. And again, we talk about little things, Pat, but twice Ryan Grant has picked up a blitzer, yeah. allowing Quinn at least enough time to get it off, although he took the hit that time. You know, when your quarterback goes on such small things, yeah. love when he picks up that blitz. A good stretch play again. Walker. <laughs> Darius Walker. See a flag down, I think. Bergeron. There is a penalty marker. Get that stretch play going, don't they, Tom? They do. That's their favorite play, I guess you say. Yeah, they get the ball real deep to the tailback at the time, Walker, and just let him feel a... It's going to be a holding call against the Irish. But they've been very, very successful with this stretch play. Holding. Offense. Number 85. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Tight end Billy Palmer with a hold. Might be a time, a nice time for that fake screen, fake rocket, and throw the ball deep to Matt Shelton. Scored on a touchdown early in the year on it. We weren't so sure we would see a Shelton play today. He was a little banged up. He hurt in practice. And uh, he did make it onto the field for that one big attempt a moment ago, which almost was a touchdown. And three catches last week and four TD catches on the year. Step off the penalty against the Irish. Puts the ball back at the 48-yard line of Stanford. And first down and 20. Ryan Grant back in at tailback. <laughs> Quinn steps up. Down the sideline. Two men right together. Stovall. Maurice Stovall, 43 yards down to the Stanford Five. And, and that time, Brady Quinn got enough oomph on him. Gathers his legs, gets in position. Great protection once again for him. Two wide receivers right in the same spot. But the 6'5", Maurice Stovall, goes up like Evan Moore would at Stanford. A pretty good coverage there. He just stays with it, stays with it. And we saw him block well earlier in the game, and he gets his reward right here. First and goal, Irish, five-yard line. Walker at tailback. Powers Neal, the fullback. Walker. 
Buried at about the four yard line by Jenkins and others up front for Stanford. Notre Dame had the ball in a similar situation against Purdue early in the game before it got out of hand really. And Walker had the ball stripped for a key fumble, a key play in that game against the Boilermakers. I think the nicest thing, though, for, for Tyrone Willingham is because they've been able to control and possess the ball, they, you know, they can keep, they can play a lot of close games as well. You're not going to win them all in the fourth quarter, but you want to give yourself a chance. Second down and goal. Walker. Darius Walker with penalty flags fly all over the place. To the two-yard line. Bergeron in the center of things for the Cardinal. Well, Stanford had two first in goals in the first half. Didn't punch it in and had to settle for two field goals. And the Irish getting their first opportunity. Waiting the penalty call here. And the fans getting a little restless. You sound a little frisky <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Face mask against Stanford. Trying to stretch play down there inside the, the 10. They run. This time to the left. See how deep he gets it to his tailback? It's coming through. The, there's the face mask right there. Easy call. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So spot the ball at the two-yard line now. It'll be first and goal for the Irish. Trying to punch it across for the first touchdown of the game. First trip in the red zone for the Irish. Stanford's been there a couple of times. Three tight ends, Palmer, Collins, and Clark. Schmidt is the fullback. Grant is the tailback. It bounced right back to Brady Quinn, who took it to the three-yard line. Now he has a carry. You know, he's had two receptions that he's thrown to himself off tip balls. It, it, just when things are going well for the hours, you got a nice drive going. Just a mishandled snap or exchange. He has the ball there. I think, did he hit the fullback? He just came right out of his left yeah, hand. just came out of his hand. Well, I think got a lucky it, bounce. Oh, yeah, fortuitous bounce. Yeah, that, that ball could have gone anywhere. Yeah, it, it bounced yeah. off Grant's legs, as a matter of fact, right into the hands of Quinn. So second and goal, now back at the three. Hand off to Grant. Stretch, dive, did not get in. He marked out of bounds at the one-yard line. Yeah, these inside linebackers, Schimmelman and Bergeron for Stanford, have had not only a good first half, they've kind of continued it on in through this third quarter. It's going to bring up a third and goal for Notre Dame. We talked about the ball handling of Brady Quinn. He's been so, so good at that. One of the plays over the year, the little fake inside, and he's kind of went around the corner for a touchdown against Michigan State. Now, what's going on here? to know the same thing. Possession of the ball at the one-yard line. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't, don't look at me. I'm not sure what happened there either. I mean, I, th I think Ryan Grant left and the ball may have come out in okay. his hand. Apparently that is what happened. I didn't see the ball come loose, but... So Powers Neal now is going to take up the tailback spot. And Josh Schmidt, the fullback. Third and goal. Powers Neal. Powers. Still no signal. Stop short. Stop short of the goal line by David Bergeron. Again, Bergeron in a tug way, too. Number 21, the free safety. I see Jared Newberry getting off the bottom of the pile, too. And the Irish go for it on fourth down. Inside the one. Fourth and goal for Notre Dame. Really good inside penetration. A Togway started, started the, the tackle and it was finished off by Bergeron. 
Grant back in at tailback. Schmidt remains at fullback. It's fourth and goal inside the one-yard line. Grant. Touchdown. Flags are down. Face mask call again on Stanford. So the touchdown is good. As I said, nice to have Ryan Grant back for the Irish for these kinds of plays. Good pull there by Bob Morton. Gets a piece of his guy, John Sullivan, the center. There's the face mask there. Good call, but really good sustained drive by the Irish. Just kind of hammered it right at the inside of Stanford. Ball control to open the third quarter. And now Fitzpatrick will attempt the point after to give the Irish their first lead. And they have a swing gate and Sheldon, the, the holder, always looks at the bench to see whether they're going to call for the two-point play or not. He's just trying to slow down the rush. First time we've seen this this long. Here they come. We're going to see a two-point play at some point this season. <laughs> you're, I just, I just you're sure of it, aren't I am. you? Fitzpatrick boots it through, and the extra point is good. And so Notre Dame drives down the field. Stovall made the big catch to keep that drive going. Grant punched it across, and Notre Dame has its first lead of the game. The scoring drive 73 yards in 13 plays, which consumed nearly six and a half minutes. And after the personal foul, they kick off from the 50-yard line. So Rankus will kick from the 50. They should get their first touchback, right? <laughs> Maybe not. That was an ugly looking one, but it does bounce into the end zone. Yeah, it will be down there. So very first touchback of the there season. There is a touchback. That's a reason to celebrate. Reason enough to send it to Jimmy Roberts in New York. Jimmy, 48-29. Nice to see Bobby Ross yeah. get a win. Stanford takes over now, trailing for the first time today. And Edwards right to the air. Caught by Evan Moore. You see those great hands of Moore as he just snatched it out of the air down to the 44-yard line, a 24-yard game. Remember when Kent Bear said to us yesterday, you know, you throw it anywhere, this guy just seems to be able to get it right here. You know, pretty good speed, good release, good head fake, and then throw it high, let him go snatch it, just as you, the, the word you described. No bobbles in that. And uh, 57 yards on his three catches. Had a lot of people here to see him play today. 18 people from California, another seven from Iowa, where some of his ancestors are. Edwards again finds more. This time the game much shorter, only about three yards before Mike Richardson takes him down. You know, we talked to Evan earlier in the week. He was really excited about playing here at Notre Dame Stadium. This is their first road game. And uh, they don't draw necessarily big crowds out there in the farm, do they? Yeah, they really don't. So first time they get to play in front of 80,000 people and a, and a big challenge. Second down. Edwards retreats. Far downfield, and this is Moore. Can't track it down. Incomplete with Mike Richardson running with him. And Evan Moore, who hopes to start at power forward on the Cardinal basketball team this season. And Stanford has a long and storied tradition of two sport athletes. John Elway drafted by the Yankees prior to his NFL career. James Lofton. 78 NCAA long jump champion. And before John Lynch's Pro Bowl NFL career, drafted by the Florida Marlins as a pitcher. And of course, how can you forget Bob Mathias, who won two Olympic gold medals, 1948 and 1952, in the decathlon. Third down play for the Cardinal. 
Edwards rifles it to Smith, the tight end. And he has wrestled to the turf close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it. Didn't Matthias climb onto the Wheaties box after that? <laughs> he did. Yeah. You know, one guy we didn't mention there is John Brody, who was a great quarterback there in the 50s and played on the Stanford golf team and later played professional golf. As a matter of fact, he won a tournament, a senior tournament. See the spot of the football across our yellow line, which we see will make it a first down for the Cardinal. There's a lot of two sport athletes on this team. A couple in basketball, we've talked about Bradford and Moore, and a lot of guys who run track. Michael Brewer. The wrestler no current baseball players but a long yeah. tradition of baseball players playing football too at Stanford well, buddy Tevens two-way sport man at Dartmouth what do you think his second sport was well I guess baseball when we met with him he told me no hockey which <laughs> makes some sense now but he played hockey and football at Dartmouth has a long uh, relationship with Kevin White the current Notre Dame athletic director Ted Leland his athletic director at Stanford hired him he has Worked at some schools that have that academic athletic mix like Dartmouth and like Tulane. Nothing quite like Stanford. Edwards hit as he got it away to Smith. And Smith rambles to the 15-yard line. It'll be first down Cardinal after a gain of 30. Zibikowski taking Smith down. You know, you know, a good tight end, the, the, the big physical guy, you don't have to necessarily throw a perfect ball, although this was pretty well thrown. But at 6'5", almost 260 pounds, what a, what a threat, a vertical threat. Right down here, he gets right past Goolsby. Throw the, the left zip on that ball so that it wouldn't even be able to hit by one of the safeties. But what a nice throw and play by Alex Smith. Mark the ball at the 16 yard line. First down, Stanford. Edwards complete to Moore. Moore got away from one man and falls forward for a first down to the four yard line. First and goal, Stanford, as you saw the strength of Evan Moore. He took on Zibikowski and Alec and got yep. the best of them. And how about Bill Cubitt, the offensive coordinator, said, hey, if they're going to play off them, throw it to them and then try to try to tackle them. Talk about the big receivers here at Stanford. See, Moore at 6'7", Smith a tight end. Just, you, just, you just saw 6'5", and over six feet for the other two guys against that size of corners for Notre Dame. First down and goal, four-yard line. Lemon is the tailback, Boniface the fullback. Single coverage down here and more. And Edwards goes behind him, incomplete. Remember the first half we saw double coverage and, and Trent Edwards called a timeout. They come out in two tight ends. They split Evan Moore out. If you get single coverage, they're going to throw it. If you get double coverage, you're going to run it or do something else. Had him on a slant that time. A little, a little too much juice on that ball by Trent Edwards. Yeah, he zipped it behind him high and hard and incomplete. Just not done a very good job of pushing the ball across the end zone because they have not run the ball well down here. Edwards has hit five of seven on this drive. Here's his eighth attempt, and it's incomplete. Flag down. McCollum defended by Carlos Campbell, who's going to be called for interference. Justin McCollum, number seven. John Elway's old number, by the way. They don't retire too many numbers. It's Obviously not. <laughs> Justin McCollum has become a very good. Pass interference. Defense, number two. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. He meant six, Carlos Campbell. But, uh, you know, really become a very good third option for them. Right here. Holding on to his jersey. Yep. He had a grab of his jersey. There. Not much argument there. Well, even though Campbell, Campbell argues, but didn't have much of a case. So first down, goal, two-yard line. Edwards after the fake. There's a flag down. Edwards throws it away into the band. See, even there, they don't try to run it. You know, first and goal on the two-yard line. Justin Tuck a little slow getting up. Offside Notre Dame. Another... First down for Stanford. Offside defense number 44. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Still first down. It was Tuck who was shaken up. It was offside. Well, you know, it's a long season for these guys, you know. I know the NFL season's even longer, but boy, all the collisions that these defensive ends go through, rushing the passer and the linebackers. 
Well, All right. I think you, you got to hammer it a few times up the middle time. Well, you got another first down after the penalty, so the ball now at the one yard line. First and goal from the one. Trips in the backfield. I Lemon touchdown Stanford. J.R. Lemon. Yeah, this for two here. Right? It's 15 to 10. Two point play. He makes it a touchdown. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Lemon. And let's see if they. Yeah, here comes the. They're staying on. Yeah. Yep. Offense stays on the field to go for two. It is Stanford after all. Absolutely. They, they know their math. They're calculus. Good block on the right side. Jeff Edwards, the right tackle. Brian Head, the center. Michael Brewer. You're missing one guy. Maybe we spoke too quickly. Huh? <laughs> Didn't realize they're going for the two point play. Still 10 seconds left on the play clock. He's going to have to burn a timeout. So it happened twice to Notre Dame and once to Stanford. So Stanford is forced to burn a timeout to get the. 11th player on the field for the two point conversion attempt. Yeah, take a good look over here on the right side of this offensive line. And then a good lead block by. They had Danahe, Danahe, Danahe and Boniface yeah. both lined up in front of Lemon. And a quick snapped it. Again, again. J.R. Lemon, who's had a, had a terrific week last week against Washington, an 82-yard run early in the year against USC. And then when his team was behind, when they needed a little power run inside, provides that too. So he's given them long runs and short runs and important runs. J.R., an engineering major from Fayetteville, Georgia, Sandy Creek High School, where he was a prep All-American. Almost seven yards a carry coming into today's game and scoring his fifth touchdown of the season there to put Stanford in front. Now they'll try to make it seven. Well, you know, it's never a bad idea to give Evan Moore a shot on these kind of plays. You double cover him if you're Notre oh, Dame? Absolutely. And Kent Bear said he was going to do that when he could. He's, we've seen one of two plays double cover him, but the guy was 6'7, great rebounder in basketball. You know, anything high, he's going to have a chance. He's already got you by about five inches. So Stanford going for two to try to make the lead seven. And up here, and plenty of room to the back of the corner. Edwards. To the end zone. Caught. And then intercepted. That went through about three pairs of hands. That, that could have been returned for two points for Notre Dame. Dwight Allen came up with the football. It looked like a, a Notre Dame player tipped it. Mm -hmm. Then it looked like Moore had caught it. Let's see what exactly what did happen. Tips, it was, yeah. Campbell tips it. Caught, and Alec comes away with it. Took it right out of Moore's hands. So the conversion attempt for two fails in a kind of bizarre play. And the Irish are... Still within five. It's 15 K. The head drum major, Katie O'Sullivan, <laughs> no, at Notre Dame, directing the Irish band. And there's Katie before the game. She led the band of the Fighting Irish onto the field. She's uh, from Southern Chicago suburb and uh, a pre-med major who auditioned for the head drum major position. Katie O'Sullivan, is that perfect? For what? Story kicks off. Here's Anastasio. Tripped up and falls forward to the 20-yard uh, line. Wusu tripped up on Astacio. Here's before the game. Katie O'Sullivan leading the band out for their pre-game show. All 360 strong. At the beginning of the season, they practice three times a day. The football team only practices twice. Well, yes, she's not a music major. She uh, loves music, but she's a pre. She's going into pre-med biological sciences major. So, why would you want to be the, the head drum major? She said, oh, the feeling of power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's cute. Uh, Looking to go to med school next year. <laughs> to direct the band and to get the fans fired up. Darius Walker. Sanford thinks they have recovered the fumble. Still no sign from the officials who are digging through the pile there. Notre Dame retains possession. Katie okay, said they have 360 members of the band, but they actually practice 380 in case you get a 
to get a pulled tuba or something to get a replacement. <laughs> There's Darius Walker, who's played so well in this first half. And close to two yards. Mom looking the, on the, the, his mom in the halftime piece that you're so concerned. worried about yeah. him getting hurt. One of the littlest guys out there, she said. Huh? He is indeed 5'11", 200 pounds. Well, you know, it's a midway point, but the Irish have had a lot of injuries this season already. Fasano and Marcus Freeman, the tight ends we've talked about. Ryan Grant's not been able to play much. Darius Walker down now. Still ball missed a couple games. Yeah. There's Fasano. I believe a long-time trainer of the Fighting Irish. While they tend to Darius Walker, we'll take a break. 2.58 left in the third. Stanford by five. King shaken up. Here's the play. He actually took a real shot from Bergeron. The ball pops out. You see it right there. Now down on the ground. One of his teammates, I think it's Stevenson, number 74, makes the recovery. But just a big show. Watch number 48 to hit him right smack, helmet to helmet. So Walker on the sideline. Ryan Grant back into the tailback spot. His parents look on. Looks like the mom was on the phone there. Second down and eight. Fake the handoff to Grant and Quinn's in trouble and sacked at the 12-yard line by Jenkins. Julian Jenkins, that's the second sack today of Brady Quinn after seven last week. He's had two games where he's not been sacked at all. Was that a busted play or just? It looked way too long to develop. Yeah. I mean, I think he kind of got out of the pocket a little bit too early. There's the play action fake. He feels actually number 17, Jared Newberry. And, and I think actually if he stepped up, Newberry runs behind him. But he kind of flushed out of the pocket right into the waiting arms of Julian Jenkins. It's like three sacks on the day. That's going to have to call a timeout. Not a good use of the clock, huh, Tom? Not at all. Yeah, yeah. Both teams have struggled, actually. So the Irish take their first time out of the second half. Trying to get things straight with 2.10 left in the third. Trailing Stanford 15-10. Third down and 16 for the Irish. Brady Quinn... Not even close. Like Shelton was the closest man to it, and Quinn took a hit. I think it was, was it Brandon Harrison, yes. I believe, came off the corner. A real late, delayed blitz by Brandon Harrison. Some of the coaches have talked to us this week about Harrison, his timing on the blitzes. And it, it looked like, he, I thought he was going to drop off in coverage and came late and still got to Brady Quinn. Affected the throw. Fitzpatrick to punt for the fifth time, standing in his own end zone. And there's Marrero, close to midfield. It's Patrick, nice booming kick. Backs Marrero to the 35-yard line. Trying to get behind the wall of blockers. Caught and tackled. Nice special teams play by Jerome Collins. You know, it's a flag down. I, I think Jerome Collins was clipped or blocked in the back and still made the tackle. 49-yard boot by Fitzpatrick and a loss of five on the return. One yard Definitely a block in the back. Called it a illegal block in the back on the return team number 58. Yeah, and it was ten on. yard penalty from the end of the run. First step. And it was on Collins. Collins got blocked in the back. Still made it. Still, still made it. Play for a minus five on the return. So punting from his own end zone. Fitzpatrick with the aid of a good special teams play and the penalty. Well, pin uh, Stanford back to the 25-yard line. Pretty impressive. B.J. Fitzpatrick quietly has had a good season for the Irish. He's a field goal kicker. He's made 12 of his last 14. Not all those this year, of course, but good directional punter. And averaging uh, right at 43 yards a punt. So first down for Stanford. Play action fake. Edwards for more. Can't catch up to it. Incomplete. 
Thursday on USA Network, live from North Carolina, Jim Furyk and the PGA Tours fall finish swing south for the Chrysler Classic of Greensboro. That's the Chrysler Classic of Greensboro, live Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern on USA Network. Okay, that, that was a freebie. I mean, Trent Edwards had Evan Moore wide open in a short corner. Out. Would have been about a 25-yard gain. Instead, it's second and ten. You know, see, they're pressing these guys now. A little bit closer. That let them have those easy catch and runs. Hand off to Lemon. J.R. Lemon fumbles the football. Right at the feet of Bradford, who falls on it. Bradford was a bit surprised. You know, for a point guard, you'd feel <laughs> that ball there, wouldn't you? J.R. Lemon on the carry. Burrell knocked the ball free. Lemon lost it, and it fell right against the feet of Bradford before he even knew it was there. In the very beginning of this show, we said the Irish need to run the ball well and force a turnover. Well, they forced this one, but didn't make the recovery, which is a little unusual. There he comes late in his feet. Because generally, when the Irish force fumbles, they recover. They forced 15 coming in today and recovered 10 of those. They're down in two. Tolan in it, tailback. And press coverage to take away the easy throw. Edwards rolling to his right, being chased. Goes for the tight end who pushed off to get there, and it goes incomplete. Traverso was the intended receiver, covered with the linebacker Derek Curry. Pass out of bounds, incomplete. Well, you know, can't change a strategy by Kent Bear. Remember in the beginning of this half, we saw loose coverage. They throw the ball to Evan Moore a bunch of times. He broke some tackles. And they got, you know, got on the scoreboard. And, and then what he's done is just change it up, bump and run coverage, and take away those quick, easy throws. And that's why you're seeing Stanford punt again. Standing in the shadow, Carlisle Holiday for the Olivegio punt. He fumbles the ball, but there's no rush. Now they recover. And Notre Dame will have it deep in Stanford territory. <laughs> His foot ever touched that ball, did it? it didn't. John Carlson of Notre Dame, one of those uh, plethora of tight ends. Plethora, that's more than five. He had six of them. Just bobbled it the entire way. Don't give him the wine list. Boy. Stanford recovers, but of course it's fourth down, and so Notre Dame will take over there. You know, it was Stanford who blocked two punts right. last week. Now, I guess that goes down for a block punt, but he never touched the ball. Yeah, he whiffed on the uh, kick after he fumbled the snap, and not under any pressure when he fumbled it. He almost got away with uh, picking it up and kicking it anyway. Quinn on first down, hands to Grant, and Ryan Grant nearly burst free. He's to the 18-yard line, and Togway saved the touchdown. And Togway saves a lot of touchdowns with the way he tackles. Good hole, a patient run, kind of waits and waits and waits for the right moment to kind of turn it on. And Togway to make the tackle. Ryan Grant just doesn't seem to rush things. Nice, productive day for Grant after missing a couple of games with a pulled hamstring. And there's the final second of the third quarter. So the third quarter ends with Notre Dame threatening but still trailing Stanford. At the end of three quarters at Notre Dame Stadium, one of the Notre Dame traditions, Katie O'Sullivan, the drum major of the Irish band, directing the 1812 Overture as the fans salute Coach Willingham by making a W with their hands. She said that's one of the reasons you want to be the drum major, that feeling of directing the band and bringing the crowd alive. Here's Ryan Grant. Powering inside the 15-yard line. David Bergeron with another stand for tackle. Grant helped to his feet. Yeah, not a big run. You know, that's not a 20-yard you know, run type, but it's kind of picks up the first down, keeps, you know, the ball out of Stanford's offensive hands, you know, puts the team, you know, with 114 yards rushing. A lot of good things happen when you hand the ball to Ryan Grant and you're patient with the running game. From the 15-yard line, first and 10 for Notre Dame. They trail... 15-10, opening series of the fourth quarter. Brian Grant breaks to the outside, now cuts up. Down to the seven-yard line. Brandon Harrison on the stop. Well, Jerome Collins, number 48, is doing a pretty good job of blocking on the perimeter. You see both, both of these running backs having a nice 
afternoon. Productive day for the runners. Talked at the very top of the show, 150 yards with what they've averaged in their three wins and less than 50 yards in their two losses. Grant out, powers Neal, now the lone running back. Powers Neal, the counter play, didn't get much. Tackled by the center of the Stanford defense and Oshinoa he, he, down at the bottom of the stack. He's big enough to be the center in, in two sides at 6'3", 320 pounds. Don't say two sides to him. He thinks he's ordering dinner. <laughs> Large man who kind of secures that middle. No, uh, he didn't buy any medium t-shirts either. That size. He played pretty well for the Cardinals. Third down. Two yards to go. Grant back at tailback. Collins, a tight end in motion. And to Grant, using his blockers. He's inside the five, down to the three. It'll be first and goal for Notre Dame. Yeah, Bob Morton, number 76, is pretty light on his feet as a pulling guard. Now, he really didn't knock anybody off their feet on that particular run, but he's 6'4", 300 pounds. He's just a pretty nimble guy. Leads the runner around the corner to pick up a first down. First and goal, Notre Dame from the three yard line. Grant the tailback, Schmidt the fullback. Runs into a stone wall and is thrown back. And once again, Brady Quinn continues his fake. It, it, it just, it's one of those subtle little things that over the course of the season, he's going to score a, a couple of touchdowns on boots. Because oh. nobody was paying attention on that one. Yeah, meantime, Oceanoa, Oceanoa in the center of that Stanford defense just blocked things yeah. up. And no gain on the play. He, he's had a real solid game because the Irish offensive staff thought they could run the ball right up the middle, right past him. Now he's old. Grant trying to get the corner. Touchdown! successful so I think that's good point call just keep running until they stop it and the Irish will go for two good strong solid run set up by a blocked punt well I guess we call yeah, it a block I, I actually played with a guy in a Rose Bowl game who whiffed a punt and picked it up and ran for a first down <laughs> Talk good about coach a trick play so Ryan Grant scores his second touchdown. And no swinging gate this time. They just line up to go for two. And they tried it one other time, as you see, unsuccessfully. Fade pass. Schmarza tried to one-hand it. Lee Torrance had position on him. And he's saying his right hand was held, but he could only reach his left hand up. It, it, that appeared to be the case. Jeff Samars has got some size to him at 6'5", also a two-sport star at Notre Dame. Yeah, he's got pinned kind of in there, didn't he? Yeah, I think it's a good athletic play, actually, by right. Lee Torrance. Right, So the conversion no good. It remains a one-point game. Notre Dame, 16-15. Sixteen push-ups for the 16 points. Waiting for one of those games where they could do 40, 50. Well, last year against Stanford. Yeah. DJ Fitzpatrick's going to kick this one off now. Rankus kicked off for earlier. And rushing him a catch in her deep. This one will reach a yard deep in the end zone. McCutcheon comes out with it. Spinning around. 
taken to the turf at the 20 yard line. BJ Fitzpatrick is now punting, kicking, and kicking off. Right. Just what Ty Willingham was saying to us this week, he was trying to relieve him of some of that pressure. Good kick, though. So now it's up to the Notre Dame defense to preserve a one point lead. The Notre Dame defense, known all season long for its opportunistic play, forcing turnovers. And today they've forced them, they just haven't been able to recover them. Let's see if Kent Bear's defense still plays press coverage on the outside here, which he was doing here. Here they come up, forcing them to go somewhere else. Should be able to get to the tight end. It's like a linebacker blitz come. Edwards. Moore. Batted around three times before it falls incomplete. Burrell had the interception nearly. Then Moore nearly had the reception. An yeah, an offensive reception. Finally falls to the turf. Boy, really good, tight coverage on Evan Moore on the outside. And it was Alec, number 24. You know, you know, we always talk about... Close to interference yeah, there. Could have, been, could have been interference. Talk about those short memories. Alec was beaten for the 97-yard touchdown pass last week, but played has played very well in the second half against Evan Moore. He's right down here. Second and 10. Edwards chased from the pocket. Flags are down. And Edwards will scoot and deliver and incomplete. Again, tended for Evan Moore, defended by Ellick. And again, a good play by Dwight Ellick. Flags came down early in the play, and it's a hold against Stanford. So, you know, Trent Edwards has got some pretty good speed. He thought he was going to be able to outrun Brandon Hoyt to the corner, but Brandon Hoyt had a pretty good angle on him, and it was not going to happen. That's why I saw him throw it. Another guy who's, another guy who's made some important tangle uh, tackles for the Irish uh, this Holding season. Offense number 72. Penalty is half the distance from the previous spot. Replay second down. Brewer guilty of the hold. Now, this is where I think Trent Edwards really has to be careful. I mean, with 11... 37 remaining here in this fourth quarter. You don't have to try to win the game unnecessarily this series. Just don't force anything. Edwards lofts it. Sideline for Moore. Incomplete. Again, Alec and Moore locked up. What a series for Dwight Alec. Boy. This is a guy, you know, he's really had his moments. Uh, we talked about last week, but against Michigan, he had an interception, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. And then against Washington, another interception and a forced fumble. Kind of their uh, emotional leader in the defensive backfield. Senior from Tampa, who is a former track athlete as well, as our, attending our theme of two-sport athletes. Edwards has missed his last five pass attempts. It's third down and 20. Hit as he released, and it falls short. Justin Tuck got a piece of Trent Edwards. Justin Tuck affects a lot of throws. I mean, you always talk so much about sacks. But just kind of disengages with the tackle. He gets a piece of it. I think Button Sack got there as well. And that's uh, two good bookings, putting pressure on Trent Edwards. Otto will have to punt from his own end zone. Remember, the last time he had it, fumbled the snap. It was a fiasco. This one he gets off high, deep. Holiday season hit out of bounds at about midfield. It didn't actually go out of bounds. It stayed in the field of play. Did Holiday's leg? Did, and if it hit him, it'd be a live ball. Apparently not. He cuts him down right there. But that took a strange Yeah, I thought, it, I thought it hit the white line, too. Bounce back in. Winds up being a 58-yard punt without a return. Blow to the left elbow the last time he was in the game when he fumbled the football, but he is back in at tailback, and here he is asked to carry on first down. And a four-yard gain on first. Very balanced attack today. We said at the top it's important. Just gives you so many options. They've run it and successfully thrown it. About the same as you see. Yeah, and I think the other thing, Brady Quinn is just, you know, he hasn't had to throw it 40, 50 times. Only 19 pass attempts for Brady Quinn today. And 
he's got the tipping point. If he throws 30 passes or less, they win. And 31 or more, they lose. Right now they're winning by one, 16-15. Clark in motion. Walker. Not much, a couple of yards perhaps. Brady Quinn kind of a, after a big week last week, kind of a quiet week in terms of those yards. 1927 yards. He had 432 last week, but he'd much prefer this kind of game. Leading by one point. Trying to have your offensive line grind it out. This is a very important third down for Brady Quinn right now. Trying third keep, down and five. Trying to keep this drive alive. Keep it away from Stanford. Newberry blitzed. Notre Dame picked it up, and Collins, the tight end, falling down, makes the catch for a first down. Well, Tyrone Willingham said, right when he came out and talked to Lewis Johnson, said, we can't drop the ball. They have not dropped the ball this second half, and that's the second big catch for, by Jerome Collins on third down to keep drives going, keep the chains moving. Big hole there for the tight end. That's why they felt they had a great tight end plan for today's game, and Last week, tight ends got 11 touchdowns last, uh, 11 passes last week for 190 yards. So the tight end's a prominent part of the Irish offense. First down, 44 yard line of Notre Dame. Walker. Stanford manages to string it out toward the sideline until Alston can make the tackle for no gain. Did you, did you see the hustle play by John Alston, 37? I mean, he was on the entire other side of the field and just sprinted down the line of scrimmage to catch Darius Walker from behind. It's a lot of different states. They recruit broadly, don't they, Tom? They, All over the country. The whole nation. And, of course, it's a small pool of those that mm -hmm. can qualify academically at Stanford. And... You have to be motivated academically as well as athletically. Yeah, and, and, but you don't. You, you, you like them to be student athletes, but you want them to play like athletes on, on Saturdays, right. not students. And, and that's what Buddy Tevens has got. He's got guys that really care about football. Quinn rifles it in the direction of Shelton, who is either falling down or taken down by Schimmelman and Wilson. So Buddy Tevens was saying to us this week in, in recruiting, oh, there's that small pond that you talked about, Tom, that... He wants great football players who can come to Stanford and play great football and go on to a career. Maybe maybe the NFL. So he's not afraid to sell that even at an institution like Stanford. It's even somewhat on the hot seat as the season began, but with a 3-1 and one start, a near upset of USC, like they're making progress in a positive direction. Eight and a half here. They're locked up in a one-point game. Notre Dame with the ball. Just beat the play clock. Brady Quinn crossing pattern to Stovall. Nice tackle by Lee Torrance to prevent further game. Bring out the punt team. And again, why throw that ball short of the first down markers? That's not such a bad one when you can get it out in front of the receiver in full speed and hopefully he outruns a man for man coverage. But it was just a good tackle by Lee Torrance. If there's nobody else there, he sprints up the sideline for a first. So Fitzpatrick back on the field in the punting capacity this time. Marrero draws a bead on it and gathers it in at the 11. First wave got by him, but the second wave didn't. It took him to the turf with only a one-yard return of a 38-yard punt. Stanford's ball at their own 11, trailing Notre Dame by one. 16-15, Notre Dame leads Stanford. Cardinal with the ball, first down at their own 12-yard line. Give to Lemon, twisted down at the 10 for a loss on the play. Justin Tuck, known for his pass rush, but playing the run much better this season. There's an illustration. Yeah, and playing it particularly well today. He's really got this inside move down pretty well. He shot the gap there yeah. and made the play in the backfield. Great speed, great push off. Now this could... <laughs> That's a cute shot of an Irish fan. Red you think she's ball. Irish? <laughs> Just a guess. In the press coverage. No easy throws. Edwards finds Moore. Flag is down. Trying to wrestle the ball away from Moore was Mike Richardson. 
We'll see what the penalty is. Edwards took a shot as he released the ball. It shows you how strong Evan Moore is. Generally, when you see bump and run coverage, you don't see those kind of routes. The passing uh, they called offensive pass interference on Evan Moore. Maybe a little too strong, huh? Yeah, getting in position for that rebound, like the uh, Hoops team. Pass interference, offense number eight. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Well, this, this becomes a really very critical series, I think, for Trent Edwards and the Stanford Cardinals. Seven minutes remaining in this football game, trailing by one. And if you are forced to punt, you're giving Notre Dame excellent field position, and you may not get the ball back. Uh, I think this is, you figure out the way to pick up 10 yards, maybe, or eight yards on the second and 16. Trent Edwards has missed six passes in a row. From his own end zone, rolling. Throwing across the center, dangerous play. He got away with it, is deflected out of the hands of McCullum incomplete. But there were three blue jerseys around, and Derek Curry had a shot at the interception. Yeah, and Zibikowski had a shot at it as well. Two different Irish players had a chance. You, you're right, absolutely, it really is a dangerous play. Derek Landry kind of forcing him on the chase. Another pop of Trent Edwards. there and Zivikowski comes out at the last moment as well. Third down and 16 from their own six-yard line. Edwards now has thrown in completions his last seven attempts. Again from his end zone. Rifles it. Bradford had to go through his hands. Incomplete. That's a good throw. It should have been caught for a first down. Boy, is that a tough drop. That's what Notre Dame did in the first half. Absolutely. A perfect throw by Trent Edwards on time that would have been for a first down. Slipped a little bit out of the break. Richardson, the defender, fell down. You saw how, how early Trent Edwards threw that ball. Adebisio from the end zone. No rush from Notre Dame. Carlisle Holiday. Backs pedals to midfield. And then is taken down immediately. Did he fall down or was he tackled? He slipped. He slipped. 44 yard punt. Only three on the return by Holiday. Notre Dame's ball, though, in good field position. Over six minutes left. For a 47 yard line. Big opportunity here for the Notre Dame offense. I think they'd like to mash it for a first down or two, wouldn't you? Nope. Play action fake. Brady Quinn pumps once. Chased. Unloads to the end zone. Shelton had it oh, boy. for a moment almost picked off by Stanley Wilson. Wilson had the inside position and nearly intercepted the ball as Brady Quinn made a dangerous play, throwing it into coverage as he was being tackled. And I, I can't believe Stanley Wilson doesn't seem more, uh, you know, upset about not making this interception. It's right to him. I mean, it, you know, maybe you give your chance, your offense one more series. You know, Shelton might have pulled his hand off the ball. If no. He just dropped he just it. dropped it. You're right. That, that was a huge play for the Irish. And, you know, the, the, the clock so, stops, too. Two key drops for Stanford, though. That would be interception, and then Bradford would have had a first down. He dropped it. This time they'll run it. Walker. They broke free, got it to the 45-yard line as we look at our Xerox unexpected play of the game. It's kind of a funny play, wasn't it? It was a dropped handoff by Brady Quinn that kind of went off one of his teammates' legs. He pops right back up to him, and a few moments later, uh, Ryan Grant scored. So a key uh, recovery. An unexpected play of the game brought to you by the document company Xerox, helping your company grow in unexpected ways. Third down and eight for the Irish. Quinn has a man open, McKnight, and he holds on despite the big hit. Stanley Wilson hit him hard. He tried to knock the ball loose, but it goes for 34 yards. Strong hands by Raymond McKnight. Yeah, you're right, the strong hands of Raymond McKnight. Coming off 
a real good game last week. Over 100 yards for catches. And let's go back to the interception that Stanley Wilson should have had just a moment ago. Then he gets beaten that time by McKnight. And the Irish just outside the 10-yard line. It all began up front, too, as the Irish picked up a blitz. Brady Quinn hit as he released it, but got it far enough downfield that McKnight had the big game. First down at the 11-yard line. And the ball to Wilson. Marcus Wilson manages to get around the corner and inside the five-yard line of Stanford. And some fresh legs the first time we've seen Marcus Wilson. You know, late in the fourth quarter, not a bad strategy by... Bill Dietrich, the offensive coordinator, just bring in your the, the speed back, let him run that stretch play wide. Just came in from this one play, did Marcus Wilson. Got around Newberry, and then Bergeron catches up to him. Marcus Wilson gives the Irish a second down and two. They can make a first down. Powers Neal now is a tailback behind Josh Schmidt. Powers Neal. Got his legs and pads low and burrows down to close to that first down marker. Like Groundhog. <laughs> that run, didn't he? He prefers woodchuck. Right? Oh, woodchuck. Something like that. But I mean, he was low and just kind of kept moving and churning. And... You know, he's been a good receiver. Has Rashawn Powers Neal. Powerful runner. Doesn't make mistakes. Well, it's just barely short of the first down marker. And it will be third down and less than a yard to go with the ball in the shadow of the Stanford goal line. And they can make a first down without scoring. Brady Quinn will keep it. line for Notre Dame has had a very good second half. You know, it took them a while to get in rhythm, but anytime you run for, they've now run for 147 yards. They did a good job. This is a big extra point. It's making an eight-point game, right? Fitzpatrick will kick it. And no problem. Fitzpatrick, one of the unsung heroes today. Brady Quinn scores the touchdown as the Irish take advantage of excellent field position. Big pass play to McKnight to set it up. Touchdown puts him up 23-15. And ready to kick off now with Fitzpatrick again doing the honors for Notre Dame. Yeah, you're right. He is an unsung hero. Has had a real nice ball game. Directional punting, kicking extra points, field goals, and now kicking off. Rushing and McCutcheon are deep. This is a squib kick. Picked up by one of the up men, Boniface. Bouncing off would be tacklers. Hard to get down the big fullback to the 35 yard line. As we take time now to look at our Hall's Fruit Breezers screaming fans of the game. Uh, what do you think? No, but yeah. the Notre Dame women's lacrosse team. Oh, yeah. Nice outfit. There you go. The hair swung the balance. A, uh, young, a young man on Starbucks. <laughs> Stanford now with four minutes left in the game. But flags will stop the play before Edwards can get it going. So I, th I think for Trent Edwards and for Buddy Tevens, you got to figure this is the last time you're going to touch the ball. So you got four downs to pick up these first downs, right? They've got two ball. False start. Number 71 offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Brian Head thought he was revving up as uh, his old <laughs> Pontiac uh, Firebird. 68 Firebird. Brian Head, the center, and kind of uh, he and his father picked up an old Firebird when he was in eighth grade restored it. So Stanford now must overcome a first and 15 after the five-yard step off. Edwards under pressure on a crossing route, complete short to Alex Smith. Safe tackle there by Quentin Burrell. 
because that guy's a hard guy to tackle, Alex Smith, as we've seen him deep down the field a couple times today, all 255 pounds of him. Got three yards on the play, second down and 12. Bradford in motion. Edwards. Chased, got away. Now he's going to cut back. Spun down short of the 40 yard line by Mike Goolsby. Mike Goolsby. And I still think you've got two downs to pick up this first down. You want to be as efficient as you possibly can. It's going to be third and what, about six? Perfect place for Alex Smith, the tight end, to kind of step up and use his 6 5 frame and work the middle. Bill Cubitt, the offensive coordinator. Stanford needs a touchdown and two point conversion to tie. This is third down and six. Alex Smith. Trent Edwards caught by Smith, but short of the first down. Yeah, he had to die for that one. If he catches that on the move, he you know, maybe breaks a tackle, picks up the first down, but it'll be fourth and one. So you called the play, but yeah. one of your pet peeves short of the first down when there's no chance to make the play. And, and this is not, you know, Stanford's kind of play, Tom. We talked about not, them not being able to hammer the ball particularly well. It's a fourth and one where you really need to hammer it up inside. Could be the ball game. Stanford needs a yard. That's the decent confusion. Edwards are going to call a timeout. Yeah, they, they, they were confused all the way around. That's a good use of a timeout there. Yeah, no sense saving it at this point. No. This is, uh, if you don't make it here, chances are you won't get the ball back. And don't forget, uh, we'll be back at Notre Dame Stadium two weeks as the Fighting Irish host their big rival, Boston College. Boston College and Notre Dame presented by Bristol Myers Squibb. That's coming up two weeks. Only on NBC, and we said this was a direction game as christened by Tyrone Willingham. Which direction will you head after this game? Toward positive territory with a win and some momentum for a challenging remainder of the schedule? Or will you fall to 500 and struggle the rest of the way? So right now the Irish with a 23-15 lead over Stanford. with one timeout left. Clock shows two minutes and seven seconds. Brady Quinn scoring the last Irish touchdown and now fourth down and a yard for Stanford. So I can't see if J.R. Lemon is in the game. But there's the guy, the most powerful back. And there he is. The guy that averages almost seven yards of carries had a good day, a powerful guy at 225. Edwards will line up in the shotgun. Lemon is alongside. J.R. Lemon. Didn't make it, I don't believe. Let's see. He stretches out. See where they mark the football. Greg Pauly up front. Wrapped him up. You know, don't, don't think he made it. Yeah. Running at a shotgun. As we've talked about a couple times, they just have not been able to line up inside the 10 or a fourth and one and just kind of take it right, right to you. They'll bring the chains into measure. Either the drive continues for Stanford or Notre Dame takes over. all day all year makes the critical stop short of the first down mark Notre Dame takes over 203 on the clock and Stanford can stop it only once more Walker 
Tackle made by Schimmelman and Bergeron, who have uh, been giants in the center of the Stanford defense all day. You know, a year ago it was a 57 to 7 score for Notre Dame, and while Stanford played this much closer, uh, they still can't feel particularly good about it. And Pat Dillingham in at quarterback for Notre Dame. Bit of surprise. Quinn's got to be hurt at this stage, right? Yeah, I guess so. I think. Pat Dillingham is at quarterback. There's Brady Quinn. Didn't look hurt. No, he does. Surprised that he's in, right? Eight point game. You get a fumbled exchange. And it to Walker. Maybe Lewis can clear it up for us. Watching Brady Quinn uh, for the last uh, series or two, he's been uh, using the smelling sauce, throwing water in his face, walking around like he's in a fog. And I just got the confirmation that Brady Quinn has a concussion. We don't know what grade or level that is. Just think about all the, the licks he's taken today, but Quinn with a concussion. So now the implications for next week against Navy and, of course, Boston College back here two weeks from now. Tom? All right, Lewis, that clears it up. So Pat Dillingham at quarterback, the clock inside a minute. Down to 40 seconds. You know, ran a quarterback sneak a while back and right. took a couple of shots. Yep. Notre Dame does take the field against Navy next week at the Meadowlands and then back home against BC. Good Navy team, an undefeated Navy team. Right. Wilson, excuse me, not Wilson, but uh, Darius Walker stopped by Austin. And down to 23 seconds. And Stanford will use that timeout, their last one. Looks like DJ Fitzpatrick is going to get a chance for one final punt. And again, Stanford, a good punt blocking team. And Notre Dame feeling pretty good over on the sideline. Had their three game winning streak snapped by Purdue here a week ago. The first win for the Boilermakers in 30 years at Notre Dame Stadium. And the Irish bounce back. Don't score a touchdown in the first half against a much improved Stanford team. And uh, the direction looks to be positive for the Irish. Here's what remains for Notre Dame. Playing Navy at the Meadowlands, then Boston College here. Travel to Knoxville. Then they host the Pitt Panthers in the final home game, finish up against top ranked USC. Notre Dame has possessed the ball 13 more minutes. Than their opponent today. I mean, oftentimes, if we know that statistic is overdone, but I think today it was characteristic of kind of what's happened. They ran for 155 yards in, 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 in the game, which was one of the key things we've talked about. They didn't get that turnover recovery on defense, but boy, they've done some some really good things. 38 carries, 155 yards for Walker and Grant, averaging four yards a carry. And they're actually going for it again. Fourth down. And only 23 seconds left. And Stanford without a timeout. Dillingham hands to Walker. Short. And a fumble. He fumbled the ball. You know, he got 15 seconds. A quarterback with a real strong arm. Tall receivers. He should have a chance to get the ball in the end zone. At least one, one attempt. So Notre Dame hands Buddy Tevens and Trent Edwards a last opportunity. Yeah, I, did. I expected to see DJ Fitzpatrick on the punt. Instead, they elect to go for it on fourth. Second time he's fumbled in the last two weeks. Cogway knocked that one loose, and Alston recovered it for Stanford. So from their own 42-yard line, 15 seconds left. Here's the 6-7 receiver right here in the middle on the trip side. Edwards. Fires short, got to get out of bounds, and Camarillo does after making the reception. Now eight seconds are left. And now he can reach the end zone, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. It's kind of a kind of a fun finish for the Cardinal. Well, if Notre Dame can hold on, this will be the 800th victory in Notre Dame football history. Only two other schools, Michigan and Yale, have achieved that number. But apparently it's not going to come easily if it comes at all. Eight seconds left. Edwards. Hit. And throws it away. Two seconds remaining. Two seconds yeah. left. Heads up play by Trent Edwards. 
Landry had him wrapped up. You know, and, and Trent Edwards, Landry did a great job. Edwards just kind of slip up to the pocket so he could give one big heave into the end zone, but but Landry just kind of kept moving right with him and got in his face. But Edwards did a great job not taking the sack, otherwise the game's right. over. So barring a penalty, this will be the final play of the game. As you can see now, no linebacker or defensive back in sight. Flag down. Edwards puts it up for grabs. Batted down and incomplete. But remember, there's a penalty flag down. Okay, Quinton, I think it was Quinton Burrell who did a great job of just knocking that one down. Didn't try to make the interception. Trying to force the ball into the turf. Offsides. Defense. Defensive end lined up in the neutral zone. The game should be over, right? No. Game, uh, it should be. But. Right, that's what I mean. There's, there's yeah. no time left in the clock. They're going to get one more attempt. Right. Game can't end on an offensive penalty. Not only that, but they get five yards closer. How can you make that kind of mistake? Still some hope on the Cardinal sideline. One last chance. Where are you, Doug Flutie? Edwards again in the end zone. Lots of jerseys around it, and it's incomplete. Game over. So Notre Dame outscores Stanford 13 to nothing in the fourth quarter to win number 800 all time for the Irish. 23-15, the final score.